come in. It is a clash of the Titans and it is big time Friday football right here on SGS again. And you see we are live at Lake Stevens High School. That's earlier today. There is not a cloud in the sky. It is a fall epic day here. It is the Lions from West Lynn against the Lake Stevens Vikings. And something's got to give, as our friend Tim Boyle always says. Both state champions, both 3-0, and and we are going to see some great football. Glad you're with us tonight here on STSBN. Our Friday football presentation brought to you and presented by Les Schwab Tires. Scott Oshman, Steve Hannon, they're on the wedge hen. Uh, Ron the wedge hen, Thor, excuse me, down on the sideline. Steve Hannon, we have a doozy. As you see, the Lake Stevens fans, they are fired up for this one. They took it on the chin, went down to Oregon last year, and lost 45-6. to But we talked to the coaches before. They think they have a better chance tonight. Yeah, they have some concerns for sure. I think when we talked to both coaches, they had concerns for sure. I think, I think both teams realized that either one of these teams could come out tonight with a victory, and there's, there's going to be big plays on both sides of the ball and, and how well are your kids going to react to that? How well are as you as a coaching staff are going to react to those plays is going to play a big role in who comes out the winner tonight. Starting with Tom try in his 19th season. If uh, we welcome anybody from watching down in Portland and Oregon, hey, Nick, they're Lake Stevens out is a heck of, of a community. He has over been there to your right nine with all league kinds champions. of uh, smoke a, his first state title though. He was in stuff, that game. So just be ready to grab that last five years. He has got a heck of a staff, and it all starts with the quarterback, Colton Matson, the junior. Let me just throw this out. The young man can throw the ball, 57 of 84, 68% completions, 841 yards, Steve Hannon, 12 touchdowns, only three interceptions, two in one game against their big comeback in Bellevue. Yeah, we, oh, well, just when look you're at running my an offense the way that Tom Try wants to run the offense here at Lake Stevens with that wide-open spread offense and the zone running game. Okay. So what you do is you keep the – the run game super simple, so you don't have to work a go lot wide, on it. Go wide, wide, so I can um, grab you. And then you can work that passing game. There you go. And you got to have a trigger man if you're right going to make that there. type of offense work. And they've got one here at Lake Stevens. One of the things didn't work for the Vikings last year was the run game. Jaden Lamar now playing on Saturday tomorrow in a big game against Oregon and Colorado. Well, his younger brother, Jayshon Lamar, 6'1", 210, the junior. He's got 50 carries, 318 yards, three tutties already. And he also has caught the ball a few times. Uh, he is special, and they got to – also, we talked to John Eagle from, from West Lynn, right? How do you contain Jayshon Lamar? Yeah, he's a different type of back than his older brother. His older brother was a little bit smaller, not quite as heavy, more of a scat back, and, and but he was a powerful runner, no getting around it. But but the, the Lake Stevens is hoping that hey, that's Nick, a little bit a little bit to your left. running style will right there. There you tonight go. against West Lynn, who's got a ton of speed on defense and they're going to run to the football. Can he pound out those difficult yards when they need them? Let's talk about West Lynn. The Lions undefeated as usual. They've had a somewhat easy road right now, 37-0 over Nelson. Again, new program. Then Sheldon, who they have tongue-tied a lot with, beat them in the state championship to win their 6A champion, 41-3. Then Jesuit, 43-14, a great program down there. But we talked to head coach John Eagle. By the way, 40th year in coaching. How's this record? 231 and 71 as a head coach over 29 years. Pretty when they good. come running out, not the four guys. The respect in the world for That's going to be uh, legitimate. You can follow them out because that's going to be for the got point two toss. Got big-time state champion hardwares from Camus 2016-2019. There you go. Follow those four guys <laughs> right there in the middle. There you go. Hold that. Anyway, Follow those guys right to the middle of the field because uh, he lost a really good one last year, but he's Ron is going to be Royals out there here. with him. Six, five, two, 15. My goodness. Also gaudy stats, 67%, 736. There you go. That's seven touchdowns and only one INT. Yeah. And coach Eagle did say when we talked to him down on the field of uh, pregame that last year, the difference between the two teams was that quarterback and, and he made the big difference for them. I think that they had some questions about, obviously you have to, as high school football, you have some questions about the new guys coming in, but I think the guys performed really well up to this point. You got it. As it going to us coming on Yeah, there. that's, I was just going to throw it down. Ron the Wedge Henthorn out there. We give you the coin toss like nobody's business. Our referees tonight, our head official, Brian Clute, Omar Kadahi, Joel Taylor, Scott Roan, and Reed Baker. Let's go down to Ron for the coin toss. So let's be our best, right? All right, Westland visitors. I have a coin that says 
called eight or heads. What would you like to call? Tails. Tails. What did you say? Tails. All right, tails it is. Just heads. Like, seems you've won the toss. All right. Lake Stevens does win, win the toss, as you just heard right there. And Mike's cutting in on that a little bit. It is a packed house. Miss Lynn's going to receive it. The Lions will start receiving as you see them shake hands. All right, thank That was pretty good. I couldn't get all that on the mic because he kept moving me around, man. But uh, I think you got a lot of it. We did. Thank you, Ronnie. We'll be going to you throughout the broadcast tonight. So it is a match of titans here, and it all starts up front. We were talking to Coach Eagle, and then let's talk about his defense, Anthony Newman. For folks around here, let me introduce you to Anthony Newman. We need Newman. to get a break in. He is Hall of Famer. We'll talk about that next, and we're going to take a quick break. It's Friday Night Football right here on STSBN presented by Les Schwab Tires. Thanks to Les Schwab Tires, I'm a confident backseat driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, breathe in. Now watch your speed and breathe out. Good. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. Help keep drivers and backseat drivers safe with Les Schwab Tires. McDaniel's Do It Center is located in beautiful Snohomish, Washington. Locally owned and operated for over 40 years, they are proud to provide the Snohomish Valley with exceptional hardware, tools, lawn and garden, and sporting goods products. Their commitment to delivering legendary customer service and their outstanding employees continue to make McDaniel's the best and one of the most recognized Do It Best centers in the nation. Stop by and experience for yourself the difference between McDaniel's and the big box stores. Discover why so many people are choosing to shop at McDaniel's. In 1934, Bickford Ford opened their doors in Snohomish, Washington, and they've been an active part of the community ever since. So when you're looking for a new Ford truck, SUV, or hybrid, or if you want to take advantage of your current car's value, start at the place you can trust, the one that's been around for 89 years and is Western Washington's number one volume Ford dealership. Family-owned Bickford Ford on Bickford Avenue in Snohomish or online at bickford.net. Welcome back to Lake Stevens High School, about an hour northeast of downtown Seattle. If you're not familiar with it, on a gorgeous, gorgeous night here in the Pacific Northwest. Scott Oshman, Steve Hannon, and Ron the Wedge Henthorn with you. Let's talk about defensive coordinator Anthony Newman. Talk about Hall Follow, of Fame. Uh, He's got those a guys when they, when they come running out. In the NFL. Kind of we get the whole group when there. The and then kit, when we read through their There path, goes the smoke. So they're they getting ready. They got two NFL kit guys. They, they, it's unbelievable. The bio, it's like multi Hall of Famers. The guy tackled Barry Sanders. <laughs> well, he said he's not alone. <laughs> That's right. As you see the Lake Stephen Vikings there you come go. out. That's right. This town knows football. 3-0, the 4-8 right. state champions in 2022. Beat Kennedy Catholic last year. And had some tough games already this year. Beat a very good Garfield team, 48-2. Then Bellevue, what a game that was. Down 21-7 in the first half. Comes back to win 34-31. Again, Colton Matson, the quarterback for the Vikings. Five touchdowns, four on the air, one on the ground yeah that looks good it is tough to come back against bellevue because they run the ball so well they chew up that clock they get a three touchdown lead and it's i gotta say it's gotta be 95 percent of the time if you went back and looked at it that they've won that deal those games bellevue so. a perennial program here in the state of washington so many state championships over the years but yeah we talked to him and he talked all about it, just going to the ball they've got a whole system of he wants nine hats on every single play yeah and that's that he said this is our identity if you were to say who are we as a defense we are going to run to the football and they practice it every day it's something that they call everyday drills we're going to do it as you see the color guard comes down we will pause here and listen into our national anthem here lake stevens it's the Lions and the Vikings right here, SDSGN. Right.
All right, what a great rendition. And you can see on the far side, yes, some people coming up from uh, West Lynn. This side of the house is absolutely packed as it is every single home game. Lake Stevens, Steve, has not lost a regular home game since 2014 against Marysville Pilcha. That is that is an unbelievable stretch of wins at this stadium. And, and, still hear me and down they there? played some really good teams yeah, okay. here. They played a union team here a few uh, years back, a playoff team that I thought they were going to really struggle with, and they and they won that game um, as well. So this is another stiff test for Lake Stevens tonight. As we're getting ready here, the smoke clears. And now it's time for football. We're going to take a quick break. We will come back with a kickoff. West Lynn receiving, and you're watching Friday Night Football presented by Les Schwab right here on STSPN. As you see the Lake Stevens Vikings there in the black jerseys, black and purple. Getting ready. A lot of excitement for this game. It's the 4A champions against the 6A champions of Oregon. Again, for us up here in the state of Washington, welcome everybody, welcome everybody in from Oregon. But learning about that league as the Three Rivers League 6A, which is a, one of the stronger leagues right there, learning from Coach Eagle, just the, the dynamics of all the different programs, obviously a smaller population. So it's a concentrated field of kind of the upper echelon teams. It sounds like the, the top three teams in their league is the top three teams in the state. Yeah. Yeah, the, looking at the energy of this game, just to get started, the Lake Stevens kids pretty excited right now with their jumping around and it almost look across the way at West Lynn. They look like they're just irritated. <laughs> yes. yes. Yes, they do. This well, is the if the coaches have anything to say about it, John Ingles, the most calm coach I've ever seen coming into a big game like this guys and Tom Trial is a little bit excited. I agree. I agree. We all. Just a second year for head coach John Ingles. You see the Home field fans getting into it. Kicking off is number 45, Lucas Mooring. This is why they have a home field advantage. Wow. Wow, it is raucous in here. It's taken just at the one yard line. Ooh, nice and game. that is Weidman. Danny! Across the 50, finally taken down, but in Lion territory. And tackled by the kicker. And uh, if the kicker doesn't make that make that play, I think he might go all the way right there. Good start for West Lynn. Danny Weidman, number 19 there in the white. He's got 14 catches, 271 yards. He averages 19 plus a catch. Got four tutties, baby. Yeah. Yeah, here we go. But they got explosive players all over the place. Both teams do. So number five in white, Big Baird Gilroy, the junior. And he's got a host of running backs. Hudson Hardy out tonight, and he's back first and ten. He's going deep first play. Corner. Caught. Wow. Inside the 20 down to the 10. And that's number 18, Drew Bates. First play of the game, just straight drop Hudson back. Hudson Hardy no out run tonight, and he's all. back just first and ten. He's going deep first play. Corner, caught. Wow. Right on Inside the, the 20 defense, down to the That ball is just thrown in a perfect spot. So the Lions right away in business. Ryan Vandenbrink, the running back. He gets it. He's through. Touchdown, Boy. Lions. Boy, that is not the start you wanted when you're Lake Stevens. After what happened last year, you'd hope for a fast start. Now let's see how well that they can put the pieces together here on offense. They're going to need a drive here. So they come up. They drive. They make the drive through traffic. They show up, and they put it up right there. 
two plays and a touchdown. Wow. Wow, that was impressive. Gage Herrick, the kicker, the senior, on to kick for the Lions. Boy, they come out. This home crowd quieted down quickly as the kick is up, and it is good. And just like that, with just a few ticks off the clock, Steve Hannon, 7 nothing Westland Lions. We'll be back right after this on STSBN. We're here to take part. We're here to take over. I am the beast. Back here, Scott Oshman, Steve, the coach, Hannon, and Ron the Wedge, Henthorne down there. Ronnie, you're on the Lake Stevens side. Uh, probably a little quiet right this second. Well, it's a little quiet right now, but you know what? This is a coaching moment, and these coaches are coaching these kids really hard after that first descent bent there. So I think they're going to pull it together. Let's see what happens on defense. Yeah, that's good to hear because that's exactly what should be happening. I mean, you know, Wes Lynn hit a long pass. The defender's right there to make a play. He just can't quite make it. It was a great catch. It was a great throw. So you tip your hat and, and, and you come out and you run your own offense next. That's all. Here it, with the kicking duties one more time. And back to receive is Esteban Cedeno for Lake Stevens along with Stephen Lee Jr., number two, the senior. And Lake Stevens offense, they can put up some numbers. So we'll see if they can answer as the kick is deep into the end zone. Herrick's got a leg. We were talking about that before the game. He's had actually a field goal in, the, in these teams, and it's just rare these days in high school football to see a kicker who can actually go 20, 30, even 40 yards. But look what just happened there. How, what a weapon a kicker like that is. That ball goes out of the end zones. Lake Stevens is starting on the 20. Lake Stevens' kick drops at the 5. And they get they start on the on Lake Stevens side of the field. That's a gigantic, obviously, a, a difference in field position. You had one while you're coaching GP, the weapon, the weapon, Spencer Pettit. Shout out to him. So Colton Matson, number 12, the junior, in charge. Empty set. Quick pass. It's caught just right at the 30, and it's brown. Really important first play for Lake Stevens right there, just to feel good about themselves and what they're doing. Hey, our game plan that we've worked on all week is going to work, fellas. Just go out and execute. Brown with 11 catches coming in tonight, 201 yards. You see that real clean. He's got four touchdowns coming into this game. First and 10. Matson back one more time. Now Lamar. Lamar changes. And nothing there. The Lions in the backfield right away. And big number 15, Baron Naoni, the big time 6'5", 240 junior, already getting all kinds of looks. A big star. A lot of stars by his name, Steve Hannon. Yeah, and Lake Stevens tries to run a counter right there. And the one thing that blows up counters on defense is when you penetrate. And, and Westland got past the first line right there. And then it was, it was trouble for the running back. Loss of two. They'll put him at second. And 12, Matson back to pass, has time. Now he's going deep. Sideline, near sideline, too much sauce on that. Trying to go to Jesse Lewis, and it'll bring up third down. And there was three deep routes on that play pattern that we just saw, and there was a Lake Stevens player running down the middle by himself and just didn't quite see him in time. Oh, my. Matson's going to want that one back. I'm sure the coaches want it back as well. Well, the coaches will put that in their pocket, right? They, they saw a breakdown in coverage, and so they're going to they're gonna come back to that play. Matson back again here. Third and 12. Motion. Rolls to the near side. Now looking right. Now has to get rid of it. Gets out of the way, but he'll go down again. Number 15 in white there with a bunch of friends, Naoni, and that'll set up a punt. 
three, almost three and out. They got one first down and then three and out as you see the play. Yeah, simple flood route, rolling out to the right. They flood the they flood the right side of the field with an out and a sail and, and, and a deep corner route. And the quarterback didn't like any of them and ended up taking the sack. So not what you wanted for Lake Stevens to answer the quick score from the Lions and back to punt. Here is Lucas Mooring. And I get a big Viking bounce. It'll head up to around the 34-yard line. And that's where the Lions will take over. And Lake Stevens now counterwise, Steve Hannon. They need to stop. The defense needs to stop. Yeah, they really do. And I, I was really – that that first play of the game where it looked so calm for Lake Stevens. They found the open player. They got him the ball. They have to they have to get back on the sidelines, regroup on it, say, hey, our game plan's going to work, fellas. Just stay committed to it and keep working, uh, doing the right things, and we're going to be okay. And defensively, you're right. Um, they got to at least slow down this Westland offense right here. So Gilroy in charge here. Going to go back to pass one more time. Some time. He goes oh, deep right side out. just too far. And that time trying to go to number six, that's Wiley Donnerberg. The Donnerberg twins, a big part of this Lions program, and it'll bring up second and ten. And the coverage is there again. It looked very similar to the first play of the game. Just the ball was just a little bit overthrown. So West Lynn obviously not worried about going deep. Vandenbrink in the backfield one more time, and they give it to him. Vandenbrink right side, breaks a couple tackles, gets all the way up. To the 43, he'll be short of the line to gain, but sets him up nicely. And that's a staple for Westland. They love that stretch play. They get in that pistol formation and hand off the back, and he ends up bouncing to the outside while the linemen are reaching and trying to seal, and he got the edge that time. But it's third and two. This is a big play for Lake There it is. Hand it off. Vandenbrink gets the first down and more into Lion territory. Dude, he is a tough, hard-nosed bowling ball of a runner. Lake Stevens kid had him um, in the backfield for a loss and just couldn't quite bring him down. And now we're going no huddle. 6-1-2-15, and they're going to run the clock, yes. Vanderbrink now goes to the left side. Gilroy back to pass, plenty of time. He's going to go deep right corner again. He wants that, but this time too much. And once again, trying to go for Donnenberg, Wiley Donnenberg, the 6'4 senior. Boy, they are a tall team out of the Lions. And they are attacking that side of the field. What have they run? Seven plays and three have been deep routes to the right side of the field. Is that a quarterback being right-handed, or do they think they have a matchup that they like? It's hard to tell. Well, I think it's a matchup they like. If you actually watch that the receiver, he kind of slowed down a little bit on that pattern, and I think that's why he got overthrown. Gotcha. Second and ten. And it's caught near side. And that's Weidman. Donnie Weidman brings it down at the 42-yard line, short of the first down. It'll bring up third. Third and what, four, it looks like? See third where he marks it? Yep. Maybe three? Three, a long three. But you, you, you got to be starting to think this might be two-down territory here, too. Fans trying to help out this Lake Stevens Beak Vikings defense. Gilroy now looks over to the team. Vandenbrook right there on his right. Switches now to the left. Gilroy. Wow. He's going to go deep left side. Too much there. This time going to different receiver. That's why it's Smiley, the 6'4 junior. And that sets up a fourth in about three or four, right? But. You're kind of in no man's land, not a tough decision. Yeah, it looks like they're going to go for it, and I think that that was their mindset. We're going to take a shot deep right here, and we're still going to go for it on fourth and three with that big offensive line. And from where we're sitting, Scott, those kids look big for West Lynn. Our they are. We will get you some program size and weight here when that program goes. They got some big fellas down there. Gilroy, Vandenbrick in his right. He gets it to Vandenbrick. Vandenbrick crushed! Right at the line of scrimmage, and the Vikings come up big. Nice job. Nice job on defense. Fill all those gaps. Hold your ground. Take on those blocks. Have a little grit in your stomach and make a play on defense so that could completely turn the tide of the, of the football game. Keegan Howard, their leading tackler 
one of the kids that stuffed Vandenbrick right there, and they turn over on downs, and that's a massive play early in this game for the Vikings. You, you, West Lynn goes bowling ball on that one, and <laughs> like had been standing up there to stop him. Yeah, really impressive, really impressive by Lake Stevens right there. So let's see if Colton Matson and the crew can get something going for the Vikings now from their own Screen. 41. Screen pass, far side of the field. Still on his feet, and he gets a Vikings first down. Yep. And that's David Brown. Simple screen. Just just flip it out there. See if you can't get some yards. You got some really good blocking by the wide receivers. Then a nifty little move there at the end to get in the extra yards. So they'll move the sticks. Two receptions early for Mr. Brown as Matson now looking back. Three and O, both teams, Lake Stevens Vikings. There's motion. Matson back now gets rid of it. It's caught over the middle down into Lions territory, and that's number two, Stephen Lee Jr. with the catch. Incomplete. The Lions. Are oh, staying. incomplete. I'm sorry. Uh oh, we got a lion down. Uh oh, did he bobble it there, Ronnie? He dropped it when he hit the ground. And we have a lion down. They're going to check on him. We will take a quick break. You're watching Friday Night Football live streaming. Complimentary here, Steve. Presented by Lush. Back here and hope he's okay. That's big number 51, Brent Ronson, 6'2", 215. The junior has to be helped off for the Westland Lions. And brings up second and 10 here for Matson. Lamar gets it in the sweep near room. side, looking for blockers. Gets to the 40 in the edge, into the 36-yard line, finally knocked out of bounds. And the Vikings have another first down. The Westland kids were complaining about getting held on the edge right there, but it looks like to me that's just good contact and good footwork and uh, good speed by, by Lamar to get around the end. Speed by me to get the hell out of the way. <laughs> nice work. <laughs> nice work down there, Wedge. That's, one, that's the only thing the Wedge won't get in, in between. So first and 10 now at the 36 of the Westland Lions. Colton fakes it. Now he's looking left. Now he throws it way downfield. It's caught at the 9-5, dragging the player in. Touchdown, Vikings! David Brown! Wow, was that needed by Lake Stevens? The, the coverage is really good. The ball is thrown back shoulder. And the defender never knew the ball was in the air. But the Lions, Xavier Harris went on a ride he didn't think he was going to go on. What a play by David Brown. Rodeo dodo into the end zone. 36-yard pass to David Brown for the touchdown. That's his fifth touchdown on the year. And this Vikings crowd is fired up now. Straight and Pester for the hold. And Mooring for the kick it is up and it is good. And he's fired up and he should be. Lucas Mooring, 6'1", sophomore kicker. Back after this, 7-7 seven, seven, SCSBN. SWIC is an acronym and it stands for Special Warfare Combatant Craft Crewman. You know, you, you can stand across from another guy and say, you know what, he's got your back. And, you know, that's the guy you're counting on. If, if something goes wrong, he's going to be there. In the end, we're, we're fighting 
fighting for each other. Here on the team, you know, about 22 of us on the boat. You know them personally, so you know exactly whose life you have in your hands. Everyone's come together and everyone's sole mission is to do their job individually as best they can to benefit everyone else in the boat. I got a brotherhood. And it's a, it's a real brotherhood. And it's a loyal and honest brotherhood. And that, that's what matters. Battle of the state championships. Lock 7-7 seven, seven with 7.04 left to go in the first quarter. Glad you're with us here. Scott Oshman, Steve Hannon, and Ron the Wedge Henthorne on the field. The kick is up. And it is going to be taken around the five-yard line. Making his way to the 20. 25 has a lane. Oh, no. Keeps going. Could go 95. And Hunter Haynes with the touchdown. I don't think so. We got a fly on the play. Blocking the bat. Down there in oh. midfield somewhere, so yeah. it's going to come back, but I'm not sure what exactly it is. It, it looks like the kicker got blocked in the back there right about that point. We look, Brian Clute. Yep, you're right. And it's going to be on Lions, as you called it there. And no reason for it if you're West Lynn. The running back's 10 yards in front of you. And, you know, we always taught the kids when the running back's in front of you, your hands go up in the air just to make sure that you don't do anything dumb like that. No, you guys, I'm on line, I'm on. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen a special teams that picked up their blocks as well as I just saw with West Lynn. Yeah. I mean, everybody was picking up a block. Instead of just running downfield, they were picking up a block. Todd Elvig, our executive producer, five tool player, running engineering, running everything. And he's right. This is, these are two very disciplined, well-coached teams. They don't make a lot of mistakes to beat themselves. Both coaches told us that about the other coach. Correct. <laughs> So, nonetheless, they're first and 10 here. They still have great field position at the 45. They fake it, and this time they get it off to their other big stud running back and still powering and gets another five yards. And that's big number 26, K. Johnson, the senior. And that looks very similar to that stretch play that we saw earlier that Westland loves to run, except for on this particular play, they pull both guards. That looks like a wing tee buck sweep type action. Coming into tonight, has 17 carries, 160 yards, averages 9.4 and one touchdown as they set up now for second. Here's oh. Gilroy going deep again, trying to get Danny Weidman just a little too much sauce on that. It's incomplete. And they had a guy. He's open. He's behind the defense. The ball's just overthrown. But that's a difficult pass uh, to throw and to complete. And, and you've got to throw eight or nine of those to hit one or two of them. That's Third and five, and he's got plenty of time. Does Baird Gilroy, the junior quarterback, as they sit here at third and five. Lake Stevens had a big stop last time on fourth and three or fourth and three and a half. We'll see what this happens here. Gilroy fakes the handoff, pass off. It's complete. And still on his feet, getting the first down and more. Near side finally knocked out of bounds. Again, is number three, Hunter Haynes, who had a 95-yard kickoff return taken off the board, but he gets into it and hits a good gain for the Lions. And again, it was a missed tackle. They, Lake Stevens had them uh, short of the first down, and just the, 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 that one-on-one that -on -one tackle is difficult. Uh, need more bodies to the ball faster. Johnson out. Here comes Gilroy. Bad pass. It's tipped up, and it's intercepted. No, there's a yes, they are. It is intercepted. David Brown once again. Another big moment for the defense of Lake Stevens. What a catch. That kid, that is a great eyes and hands. That is not an easy interception right there, folks. His second INT of the short season as you see him come off the field getting high fives and another massive point in this game all tied up at 7-7. Seven, seven. Very excited Viking sideline down here and I think we got a ball game guys. Yeah, yeah Brown was going in the wrong direction when that ball got tipped and he put his cleat in the turf and just dove back and outstretched his hands and somehow came up with that pick and uh, it looked like again West Lynn is rolling they're on their way but Lake Stevens finds a way uh, to get them stopped. Here we go. Colton Matson, the quarterback. 
Deshaun Lamar right next to him. First and 10, fakes the handoff. Now looking, goes deep near sideline. It's got a man, 50-50 ball. Wow. Really good defense by the corner. He was step for step and inside shade um, of the slot receiver running the deep uh, seam route up the and he's he he became the receiver at the end of that. Trying to go for Jesse Lewis, but like you said, great coverage there by Caden McDonald. Two and white for the Lions and brings up second and ten here from their own twenty-two. Both teams not shy. I'm not going for the long ball. And here we got an empty formation. No running back in the backfield. Matson looks to the near side. Going He's going to go again. deep again. And this time too much. Same matchup. And that's Caden McDonald on the coverage. This time trying to go for Jackson Lewis, the 5'11 senior. And yeah, the, 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 the Lake Stevens crowd didn't like the end of that play. Uh, the, the, the West Lynn kid who, who was covering on there started yapping his, yapping his lips a little bit there at the receiver, and, and, and that's, not, that's not sportsmanship, and that, that's not what you're looking for on the football field. Caden McDonald wants to talk. Third and 10, still from the 22. All they've done is tried to pass the ball here. They're going to try it one more time. Rolls to the near side. Now tries to go. And the receivers, I don't know who if he was going for number nine, Paul Varela. But it's incomplete and fourth down. And the turnover right now does not produce for Lake Stevens. It looked like in between two two receivers there, Steve. Yeah, and it looked like he, he like you said, he was going to throw short. Then he saw the, the deeper route breaking open. He thought he could lead him, and the ball just didn't come out of his hand right, and it just kind of fluttered out of there out of bounds. Mooring back to punt and see if they can turn the field over here, but the Lions are going to have good field position. High punt, and it looks like it's fair caught by Danny. That's going to be inside Lake Stevens territory. So right. good field position there, and they'll mark him right at the 48-yard line. Yeah. So okay, Lake Stevens. So let's, you know, we need a legitimate defense. Lake Stevens needs a legitimate defense to stop here. Sorry, Oregon fans. Uh, <laughs> you know, not 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 a fluky turnover and not a not not a hail mary fourth down stop. They they need to play three downs of really good defense here. So just but you are a defensive corner, right? Everybody's throwing punches. These are six A four A championships teams. Bear Gilroy, I know it's a new team, but he's back to pass. Fakes the handoff. He's gonna go screen it out. Here's Danny Weidman. Straight up field, doesn't get a lot. He's stuck there. Yep, just flipped it out to the side. You hope one guy misses. This is a tough tackle. When you got one player on one player and that guy's shifty and fast, that's, that's, that's a good play by West Lynn. Jesse Lewis on the tackle for the Vikings. Sets up a second and five. 5.07 left to go here just in the first quarter. Tied up 7-7. Gilroy. Fakes the handoff. Now push. He's got pressure. Has to get rid of it. Gets over on the far side to big ah. number 80, Gus Donnerberg. And he fights for a first down for the Lions. Leg presses in the summer. <laughs> Shout out Tim Boyle. <laughs> just just drug the defender with him for a first down. And we saw that earlier in the Lake Stevens touchdown as David Brown dragged Xavier about three or four yards, Xavier Harris to get in. Here we go. Vandenbrick there. Wow. Gets up high and he cracks through and he has a huge gain. Another Lions first down. It gets him all the way down to around the 24 yard line. West Lind up front is really doing a good job right now. They are really pushing the pile backwards. And they do the hurry up again. First and 10. Screen it out here. Danny Weidman takes on two Vikings. They finally get him down. That's a good, excuse me, number 15, Jesse Lewis on the tackle. Great job by the defense right there. Vicing, what we call vicing that tackle. Left shoulder and right shoulder on each hip and drops the ball carrier. Really good job. Good way to hustle the ball. 
Second and six, four minutes left in the first. Gilroy fakes the handoff. Now he goes over to pass, incomplete. Trying again to go to Hunter Haynes and good coverage there by Lake Stevens. That's a new little twist that I hadn't seen Westland do in their in their game film. That's a little RPO action where they fake the run and hit the slant right behind it. We Paul, haven't seen that. Yeah, Paul Varela on the coverage there, the senior. And he'll set up a third and six. On the Lake Stevens 19-yard line. Vanderbrink, the running back. He gets it to Vanderbrink. Near side, now makes a cut, but he's stuck. Really good job. Big number 54, Mason Turner, the senior. And Westland had that set up pretty well. They had an offensive lineman out there to lead on that sweet play, and Lake Stevens eluded the blocker and made the play. So great job by the Lake Stevens defense. And now it looks like you're going to see your field goal. We'll see if we can get a try here. This is from the 20. Seven yard line, so a 37 yard field goal attempt here by number one, Gag Herrick, the senior kicker. Snap, kick is up, and it is plenty of good. 3.08 left to go. You'll see it one more time. Herrick's got a leg. Good heavens. That was good from well beyond 37. Thanks to Les Schwab tires, I'm a confident backseat driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, breathe in. Now watch your speed. And breathe out. Good. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. Help keep drivers and backseat drivers safe with Les Schwab tires. Back here, the kickoff. We'll go down around the wedge, Henthorne, as it's 10 7 now, West Lynn, with 3.08 left to go. And that feels like a win for Lake Stevens on defense to me. Yes, absolutely. They got the big INT. They couldn't make anything out of it. But they had the massive stop there at third and six, and that's the ball game. Let's go down to Ron the Wedge Henthorne. What's going on down there, Ronnie? You're on the Lake Stevens side. Well, it looks like a pretty exciting bunch of boys down here tonight. Uh, they're, they're in this ball game, as you can tell for sure. And I think you guys probably got the score on the screen, but everybody in the stands down here doesn't – doesn't know what the score is because they can't see it on the scoreboard down here. So. Oh, that's right. The scoreboard malfunctioning right now. So we'll see if they got a good memory. It's it's what, uh, 10 to 7? It is 10 to 7, Ronnie. All right. Back to you, Red. Thank you. First and 10. Colton Matson, the junior Ours quarterback. Is Wildcat right to Lamar, and he'll maybe get a yard or uh -oh. two. It's, but they it's say it's a fumble. They're talking fumble. This could be massive. The officials, nobody saw this. And they ain't calling it. The White Hat says it is, in fact, the Lions football. Oh, my. That's a turn of events. It's a big turnover right in the kitchen, as they say. Now the defense will be turned over right back to try and stop them. Yeah, and that's what we call in, in the football world a sudden change. And uh, you preach this all year. You start preaching it as a defense. When there's a sudden change, you got to come out and, and, and you got to stop the offense. And that's trick play, isn't it? Something that you never have to worry about because sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. This go. time it didn't. Good call, Ron. There's Gilroy. He's going to go right there, but a whistle and a flag. I don't know if somebody moved. Ball start. Ball start on the offense. So. The Lake Stevens fans right below our position like that call. Look at the size of those kids in white. Let me run some numbers for you, my friend. Jake Normoyle, he's 6'4", 295. How about number 54? Ridge Hout, 6'2", 270. Good night. 61. Hunter Harding, 6'2", 260. 75. 
As I like to say, that's a couple Costco cards. <laughs> Fakes the hand up. No, he doesn't fake the hand up. He has the ball, and he will score. Number 26, as usual, Kate Johnson with his second touchdown on the season. An easy play there from 22 yards out. Back to the stretch play, they get they get the Lake Stevens defender hooked on the end of the line of scrimmage, and it becomes a nice open lane for the running back to run through. Uh, you know, you'd like to see your safety come downhill a little bit quicker and help out with that play. Now we got now we got uh, we got a little a we got trick. swinging gate. What we what we call the swinging gate extra point here, and the snap that kicked to number eight Nick Sachs. The backup quarterback, he had a touchdown in the game we had a timeout. earlier, but we have a oh, false start. False start. False start. How many more times? Now we're going to see the kicker. Now we might see him. And there he is. Big number one, Gage Herrick, the 6'1 senior. And now he's got to set up for a 25-yard Extra try. Westland up 16 7. 244 left to go here in this first quarter. Here's the snap. Absolutely no problem. Right down Broadway. And it's 17 to 7. What a change of events here. And we're not even out of the first quarter. It's Westland, the Lions 17, Lake Stevens 7. In 1934, Bickford Ford opened their doors in Snohomish, Washington, and they've been an active part of the community ever since. So when you're looking for a new Ford truck, SUV, or hybrid, or if you want to take advantage of your current car's value, start at the place you can trust, the one that's been around for 89 years and is Western Washington's number one volume Ford dealership. Family-owned Bickford Ford on Bickford Avenue in Snohomish or online at bickford.net. Getting ready to kick it off to Lake Stevens as not a lot of returns when you're playing West Lynn. And, and we talked about that when we had Spencer Pett and a couple other kickers that we covered in Wesco, Western Conference up here, the Northwest. It, it is unsaid what a powerhouse that is. It just puts a whole nother level because you don't have the kickoff returns. In high school football, you never know what's going to happen. So it's 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 an undervalued ability. Not to coaches, it's not. No. I mean, we just we realize when you're running 11 kids down a field to tackle a kid with 10 blockers in front of him with all that space. It is terrifying. So if you can kick the ball in the end zone, man, does that take a lot of stress off your kickoff team? So let's see if Lake Stevens. They were down 28-7 at half against Bellevue, and they came back to win. So Colton Matson flies it out. Wow. And they are right on it. He goes, and it's caught by Paul Varela, but he is taken down quickly. And number four, Bo Dixon. Bo Dixon just shoved the receiver right back into the play and makes the play that, like he sandwiched the Lake Stevens receiver to get to the ball kick. Well, in talking to defensive coordinator for West Lynn, Anthony Newman, he talked about those bubble screens. Those They've worked on them all week. Second and 10 for Lake Stevens. Deshaun Lamar off the fumble. He goes back. Quick pass. Tipped and almost caught by the other receiver, but it goes off the hands. A rare miss there for David Brown, and it'll send up third and 10 now, deep in their own territory. I couldn't tell if that ball was thrown to the up player or, or if he was trying to hit the player right behind him and it got tipped by the player in front i couldn't tell where the quarterback was trying to go there both quarterbacks coming into tonight almost 70 percent completion rates and a big third and 10 here as we're up 201 left in the first quarter mattson rolls now he pitches reverse. it reverse 
They got it set Stephen up. Stephen Lee Jr. Gets a first down now as a seam, and he's finally caught down at the Lake Stevens 45-yard line, but a big first down, and Stephen Lee Jr. might be hobbled getting up, but what a play. Yeah, they set up the reverse really nice. Look at number 54 for Lake Stevens. Get us a name on that kid. He is running to lead block. That is Mason Turner, the 6'2 senior. He's wow. been fantastic. Wow, he was working on that on that play. He came all the way from the right, all the way around to the left, and led for the running back. Good speed. So first and ten now in business with 139 left to go here just in the first quarter. Empty set. Matson. Now he's got pressure. Gets rolls out of it. He's got some room to run. Yes. He's gonna take it. He'll get a first down. Really close. Just about, or maybe they'll get him out short at the 46, seven yard line, but he's inside line territory. And a great decision there by the quarterback. Why put the ball up and put it in risk when you can get 10 yards or almost 10 on the ground? Has three running touchdowns coming into this game tonight. Good athlete, runs really well. 6'2", 185, just a junior, got playing time last year. Understands. They sign. They get it to Lamar. Lamar might have some room. Makes a cut. Goes north and south, and he powers his way down to the Lion 30, and he's getting this crowd fired up. Jayshon Lamar. And this is just another version of the play that Wes Lynn scored on on the other side. A stretch play to the left, and if we get alignment out in front, he opens up a hole, and the running back takes it. Great job. Great execution. Baron Naoni with the tackle, the 6'5" junior but nonetheless with 42 seconds we'll see if we get a playoff here we should to end this first quarter and gaining confidence i think for for lake stevens here lamar now goes behind mats and looking over getting the play back to pass now he goes over near side is it caught they're saying it's a catch. Jackson Lewis digs it out. Ronnie, you're the closest. Was it a catch? I think it was a catch. I think the West Lynn players thought he didn't get his hands under it, but I think he did, and so did the linesman on this side. Yeah, looks like a catch to me. We are have the advantage of replay here, and as we have a timeout, or no, that is not a timeout. We have gone through one quarter of champions of a state to champions of the state, 17-7. Second quarter coming up. Thanks to Les Schwab tires, I'm a confident vaccine driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, breathe in. Now watch your speed and breathe out. Good. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. Help keep drivers and backseat drivers safe with Les Schwab tires. Oshman, Steve Hannon, Ron the Wedge, Henthorn with you on a big time night here from Lake Stevens High School. Two state championships going mano a mano. It is the clash of the Titans here. 17 7, but the second quarter starts and the Vikings on the move. Second and three. On the Lions 27 yard line. Matson. Gives it to Lamar, and he'll cut up, and let's see where they mark him. It might be a first down. Ronnie, you are the you have an angle on that? He didn't, he didn't quite make it. He's, I guess he gave it to him. I didn't think he made it. <laughs> I wouldn't have given it to him. Our side judge, Ron Henthorne. I was right on the line. I wouldn't have given it to him. <laughs> Too stingy. I thought he got it. Well, the far side line judge gave it to it. Nonetheless, first down now at the... 
19 yard line, empty set. Coach tries billing out the play here. Coach Try, both head coaches, the offensive coordinators, and calling the plays. As Matson gets ready, now we go. Got pressure, had to get rid of it, going deep and incomplete. Boy, he had to get rid of that ball, trying to go to Jackson Lewis again. Yeah, yeah. West Lynn had a had a stun, an inside stunt. They brought a guy from the outside and they looped him in. And it was actually the guy from the inside, originally the one that put the heat on the quarterback. But the offensive line is looking at that loop, and it just, just took their eyes away from the original rusher and uh, got to the quarterback. 17-7. And our clock right now is on your scoreboard. We'll try and work on that. It is second quarter, 19-10 left. Here we go. Matson back to pass. He's got rushers. Goes high, almost oh. intercepted, trying to go for Jayshon Lamar, but in and out of the hands of number three, Hunter Haynes. Risky throw there, and Westland had two edge rushers come off the edge. Nobody was, nobody touched them, and the quarterback put the ball up and just about threw it in the wrong spot. Yes, he did. That is a lucky break. As Hunter Hines, who, who just joining us, had a 95-yard kickoff return negated from a penalty and we could that's a big change of events in that one on board as Colton Matson now second and three on the Lions 22. Matson man-to-man man -man coverage takes it now it gets it up to number nine Paul Valera and I'm not sure if he they're going to give him any it's back to the original line of scrimmage it looks like Wow, that was a great play by the inside linebacker because that was man-to-man -man coverage, and those tunnel screens are difficult when you're in man-to-man. -man. So great play by the inside linebacker. There. Oh, they're, they're going to go for it. They're going to try. Oh, they're going to kick one. Oh, my. Mooring on to kick. That was fourth down. Again, we're looking working on our scoreboard here. It's fourth and ten. Two field goal attempts and one half of football. That would be amazing. This is a 40-yard field goal try for Lucas Mooring, the sophomore. Pester the hold. The kick is up. It's wow. high enough. It's deep enough. It is good, a 40-yarder. And that one would have been good from another 10, 15 yards out. How excited are we that we have two kickers? Wow. <laughs> You just don't see it, folks, in high school football that often. I lost my headset. A 37-yarder from West Lynn's Gage Yurik, and then a boomer of a 40-yard one for Lucas Mooring. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back right after this. You're watching STSPN Friday Night Football presented by Les Schwab Tires. I lost my headset. Thanks to Les Schwab Tires. I'm a confident backseat driver, but Mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember... Breathe in. Now watch your speed and breathe out. Good. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. Help keep drivers and backseat drivers safe with Les Schwab tires. Right. There's our Back out. here, we are working on the scoreboard here on your clock. There it goes. Second quarter 10 17 left to go i believe that is correct so 17 10 here oh pooch kick and a pooch kick up it's front on the and it's just dove on at the 29 yard line for lake stevens and that's one of their big studs 23 ryan vandenberg not a bad strategy for for lake right there we 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 didn't like the way we covered the first two. Yeah, so, right, Lake Stevens, yes. <laughs> so let's pooch it down there at the 30. Maybe we get a shot at getting it ourselves, and if we don't, they start on the 29. We go, we'll accept that. Lake Stevens, again, this, as we always talk about in the trenches, right, they've got some big fellows themselves. They usually Navier do. Kale, 6'2", 220. That ain't 280. It's not. First and 10 to go from the 29. Gilroy is going deep, too far, 
but he had a wide open Wiley Donnerberg. Safety working over there for sure, but if that ball would have been on the money, that's probably a completion for a big gain. But we've, we've seen the, the overthrown ball a few times tonight. Gilroy's overthrown it about five or six times, and uh, either of those guys aren't running as fast as he thinks they are. He's really fired up. And I think Lake Stevens is doing a good job of collisioning those, those routes. Try again, second and 10 from their own 29. He goes back to pass. This one, he flings it out to the near side. Big number 80, stumbling, bumbling, makes a cut. Oh, my, Donnerberg, Gus Donnerberg gets all the way into Vikings territory, and he's still not down, but they're going to call him down at the Lake Stevens 39-yard line. The Donnerbergs, hello. Wow. A two-yard pass turns into a 35-yard gain. How that for a, for a pair of twins, 6'4", 210, Gus Donnerberg, Wiley Donnerberg, 6'4", 205, and here's another pass Same right pick. out to Kay Johnson, and he's finally stuffed by big number 54, Mason Turner for the Vikings. And Lake Stevens was just bringing some heat on that play, and they just threw it right over the defenders' heads. But a five-yard gain or a four-yard gain, so... Basically second and six now for Baird Gilroy. Looking at the far side, they split it, get it over to Donnie. Weidman tries to spin out of a tackle, and he's close to it, and he will get a Lion first down. Marks him down at the 27. The most successful plays we've seen tonight, we didn't see the one deep ball thrown and caught early on, but everything else has been laterally thrown with, with athletes getting yards after the catch. For both teams, that's worked for them. First and 10. First and 10 now for the Lions. Up 17-10, 8.55 to go in this half. Fakes the handoff and hands it off, and that's Kate Johnson Working, and he'll get a couple. Nice job there by the Vikings defense. Well defended. This time they didn't get reached on the end. They, they, they contained the play and made the running back cut back inside where all the help is. Good job by the Lake Stevens defense, though. Once again, Mason Turner there. For the Vikings. So second down. Like nine. And nine. Gilroy hands it off. Johnson. Cade will punch his way through. Going to leave him third and four, third and three. Or maybe even third and five. Yeah, it could be closer to that. And this distance has not been kind to Westland tonight. Third down and five has been, they have not picked up a first down with that yardage yet tonight. They Call it a good job. third and six on the board. And the Vikings fans trying to help out their Lake Stevens defense. Gilroy now flips it out. Dropped incomplete it. in and out of the hands of Ryan Vandenbrink. He was covered well, and it sets up a fourth down. Now they send out Herrick the kicker one more time. This might be a little too far for yeah, him. Yeah. Uh, that's a tough thing. He, that kick can really kick. Yeah, it'd be around 45-ish. I think Let's they're going to give they a shot. It. They're going to bring the kicker out, I think. He, He's. Uh huh. Yeah, we're shaking up here. It in is the shaking. They do this. This is Lake Stevens. They, we are on the side of Lake Stevens, the stand. So if you're seeing the cameras shake a little bit, that is why. So, 40 yarder. It sets up to be a 40 yarder. The Vikings' Lucas Mooring had a 40 yarder. Sacks the hold, the kick it's up, and it is good. And we have some serious showtime kicking going on. That would have been good for 50 yards, man. <laughs> Fantastic. What the H-E double hockey sticks is going <laughs> on around here? My goodness. If you want more big-time high school kicking, stick around. It's a 10-point lead for the Lions. SDSPN Friday Night Football presented. 
by Les Schwab Tires. McDaniel's Do It Center is located in beautiful Snohomish, Washington. Locally owned and operated for over 40 years, they are proud to provide the Snohomish Valley with exceptional hardware, tools, lawn and garden, and sporting goods products. Their commitment to delivering legendary customer service and their outstanding employees continue to make McDaniel's the best and one of the most recognized Do It Best centers in the nation. Stop by and experience for yourself the difference between McDaniel's and the big box stores. Discover why so many people are choosing to shop at McDaniel's. Back here, Scott Oshman, Steve Hannon, Ron the Wage, Henthorn with you. And this has been a heck of a ball game. The first quarter had all kinds of action. If you like high school football, this is it. As Herrick punches this far in, as you just saw, this kid has a leg. And Lake Stevens will start from their 20. They're going to have to drive the ball down the field in order to score. Ron Henthorne, did you expect a kicking battle tonight? Not only 6A champions, 4A champions. I didn't realize we were going to have a kickoff. I definitely didn't expect a kicking championship tonight. Uh, <laughs> uh, eight points for, for Gage Hertz out there tonight. So he's he's having, helping these uh, guys work it out pretty good. Yeah, they want to player of the game. Remember, uh, we'll talk about this. we got some fun stuff going on at halftime, but our – Player of the game, our adrenaline fundraiser raiser player of the game. We'll talk about that as we get closer to the end of this contest. People want a t-shirt, Steve Hannon. I'd like to have a t-shirt. Yeah. We gotta talk to Todd Elevator, executive producer. We gotta get that in the budget. <laughs> Colton Matson, the junior quarterback. Now Valera in motion, fakes it off, fakes hands up. Now he's going deep. Does he have a man? Pass interference. Intercepted! Pass that interference. was not intercepted. Trying yeah. to go to Brown. Pass interference. And we do have laundry. Take another look. That's only 15 yards, fellas. Shut it down. Thought maybe Josiah Molden, the defender on that, I thought he might have come down with that ball. It would have been a heck of a catch. It would have been because his back was to the quarterback. That's why he got flagged. Ooh, Against the Vikings. No, it's... It's against West Lynn, right? Yeah, it's 15 yards. Yeah, 15 no, it's yards. Not, not the pros. But it's not from the spot of the foul, ladies and gentlemen, in high school football. That's right. I forgot about that. <laughs> that's a it's a 45-yard play in the NFL. I know it. What a day. And speaking of football at the other levels, college football tomorrow, I am telling you, my couch and I have a date. Yeah, I'll be there all day. But now down to business. First and 10 here from the 35 on the Laking side. Valera again in motion. Spins out. Now he's got trouble. Matson eludes one guy, gets it off, and it's incomplete in and out of the hands. And he escaped trouble there as he was trying to go. What a play by the quarterback. What an athletic play. Just needed some help on the other end. Didn't get it, but... Wow, what a play by Matson. That was Keegan Howard, the intended receiver. So second and 10. 717 left in this one. 10 point ball game. Much different than last year as the Lions were dominant from oh, start wide open. wide open. Valera near side gets it. Has a Lake Simmons first down and more. Oh, just tripped up. A great play there by Trip Musabi. Wow. And Trip just tripped up the running back right there. Because he was going to run a long way without that shoestring tackle. One of the very few returning varsity players, Valera. Wow, what a great concept by Lake Stevens. Put him in half motion snap the ball and then leak him out the same side in which he came leads the vikings open. yes in receptions and here we go first and ten now on the lions side of the field lamar will stay in to block matson going deep he's got two vikings Damn. just falls to the ground has david brown there who's still looks like he's hobbled and also gave Kalani, and let's see if David Brown's okay. He is a very important player to the Vikings. It's like he's up. Was that almost intercepted? I don't think so, Ron. I think that went right to the hands of the receiver. 
Who do you think he was going to there? Yeah, either one of them was open. And it looked like the ball was on the money again. That's one of the problems with two receivers in the same area, though. They haul defenders with them. That's right. It's like basketball. Don't take the defender with you. Yeah. Yeah, he's hurting down there right now. Yeah, we'll have to check on him. He is such a big part of the Vikings team, both on offense and defense. Both these teams have just tremendous kids that go both ways and are so, so much a part of their success. So second and 10 for Colton Matson. Matson now going to roll to the far side, looking, gets a block, fires in and out of the hands. Good coverage there. Tried to go to 15, Jesse Lewis. A great tell. play by Josiah Molden right there, just a freshman. Yeah, I couldn't tell if the freshman knocked it out or was it another drop ball. But the defense was there. I mean, it was going to be a close play. Third and ten. Ron, I don't know if you got to look at it. Uh, it was all the way across the field, but I did get a look at Wyatt Smiley. was wide open, and he was just looking at that far side player. Brings up third and ten. 6.28 left to go in this first half. Down by ten. Lake Stevens trying to get some something going here as third Lamar in motion. Uh -oh. Back to pass. Uh -oh, there he goes he is. Over. It's caught. Can he take it all the way? Keegan Howard. Westland got caught in the man-to-man -man defense, and one of the Westland defenders didn't go with his man. He dropped his man to take somebody else's and left him wide open. I bet that's it.
Stay tuned afterwards, our adrenaline fundraising player of the game. We also have a Les Schwab tire lineman of the night. All kinds of festivities here. As the 6A champions, West Lynn, quickly putting something on. And this one floats out of the end zone as Herrick puts that one away. So Lake Stevens got to get something. Are you a two-minute drill, Steve Hannon? Gosh, this is a tough call by to knowing Coach Try the way that I do. This is definitely a two-minute drill. Let's get down there and score and try to feel good about ourselves. But, of course, when you go that route, you also risk turning this thing into a real circus show here. So, Well, if you can somehow make – get even get three out of it, seven, you go into the locker room. Okay, it's not going well here in the last part of the second quarter. But then you come back and get the ball back. And the whole game, that they played an even football game for the most part. It's been a close, well-fought game. So Colton Matson now he does get the handoff, and that's number 18, Rye. That wasn't Jay Sean? No, that was the senior 5'9". 18, Taha Rye. Taha Rye. And a Vikings first down, but they're running the ball and they're using up clock. Still three timeouts left for Lake Stevens, as you can see on your scoreboard. Time a ticking here for the Vikings from their 35. This time they get it back to Rye. Rye has some room, gets wow. up the middle, down to the mid stripe. Another like Vikings first down, one after the other, but the time is now down to 137. Well, remember, the clock stops in high school football until they move the change, so that's Lake Stevens can get right up on the ball and get ready to go again. Matson with the empty set. Rye here in the slot. Now Ryan Moston goes over. It's caught. The near side, that's David Brown again, and he gets out of bounds to stop the clock. It's good to see that young man back in the game. And he's trying to work it out as you see the play one more time. This is bread and butter Lake Stevens yep, football. Absolutely. Yep. Emotion away. Throw back to the side you motion from. Corner's a little far back, a little too soft, and you just get three yards. Didn't give him the first. Second and short. Ron Henthorn will try and get a coach if he could going into halftime. I don't know if he can get John Eagle as he comes across. Well, I, don't, I don't think you're going to get Coach Try. No, I don't think you are. <laughs> I'm going to try. That's oh, boy. It. <laughs> There's Jay Sean in motion here. Matson. Looks out, looks over, tipped, and Lamar catches it as he gets stuck by Ryan Vandebrick, and he holds on to the ball, and that is a Vikings first down. And a timeout. Close to the line of the game, and that's about for a Vikings first down. Wow, that was a shot. That was a shot. One of five left in the clock ticking. Lake Stevens has all three timeouts. Go use them. Matson back to pass. Now he's going deep. He's going for Brown. Just misses on the outstretched fingers. It does stop the clock here with 47 seconds left. Boy, is that kid a football player. Yes, he is. Good. And look at him just gutting it out out there. He knows his team needs him. He's hurting, and he just dove for that ball. Second and 10. So they took their shot. We'll see if they do it again. 47 seconds. Plenty of time still with the three timeouts. Brown on the near side, bottom of your screen. Lamar in motion. He's going to run a wheel route. Matson now he is getting pursuit. Matson gets a big block. And Matson's just going to run out of bounds. And the right decision there as well. There wasn't anybody open for him to throw to. He had to end up rolling right, and he only had one receiver on that side of the field. Nowhere to go. So it was a good, good decision to get out of bounds. Good job to elude all the Lions chasing him. Brings up a third and eight. There's 36 ticks left to go in this first half. They had a dogfight. It was 7-7. Seven, seven. 
Then a big 37-yard field goal by Herrick made it 10-7, and then it has been off to the races since then. It, it just The score just feels like it's not indicative of the play. I agree. Rye gets the handoff coming to the near side. And finally, it's just tossed out of bounds. We'll see if they keep the clock. Yes, they keep the clock running down to 24 seconds. We'll now see if Tri's going to get a timeout. And Tom Try on the bottom of your screen as we get this replay, you can't see it. But it is a first down, so that stops the clock. I think he called a timeout. Though. Did he call a timeout? He's timeout not. on the field. We'll take a quick timeout right here. See what happens. 24 seconds left. The Vikings threatening. McDaniel's Do It Center is located in beautiful Snohomish, Washington. Locally owned and operated for over 40 years, they are proud to provide the Snohomish Valley with exceptional hardware, tools, lawn and garden, and sporting goods products. Their commitment to delivering legendary customer service and their outstanding employees continue to make McDaniel's the best and one of the most recognized Do It Best centers in the nation. Stop by and experience for yourself the difference between McDaniel's and the big box stores. Discover why so many people are choosing to shop at McDaniel's. Back here, Scott Oshman, Coach Steve Hannon, and Ron the Wedge Henthorn. It's, it hasn't been dull, I'll tell you that. Some West Coast scores right now. Glacier Peak with a non-conference down, taking on Evergreen up 7-0 in the first quarter. We'll try and get some other scores at halftime. And Jackson leading Cascade right now. 19-12 in the third. Interesting. The Timberwolves, that's who Lake Stevens will play next week. Here we go, Colton Matson. And there's a flag, and what's going on down there, Ronnie? Do you know? Uh, number 33 was offsides. Motion. And... That's David Brown. David Brown's still sitting there. Is he having a stare down? What's he doing down there? He is not happy with the line judge. The first and 15. Now they push it back out to the 36-yard line. More room to work, right, Steve Hanson? There you go. Yeah, you, Tom Try loves that. Matt's in tough. Fox. Catch, he goes down, far right corner, wow. knocked away. Great defensive play there. That's that little, number 30. little hitch and go play over there. Try to get the corner sucked up and then throw over the top. Musavi, the junior there with a great athletic play to knock it down and brings up. What's it bring up here? What? Second and 15 still with 18 seconds left to go. Matson Looking, now they get through. Matson on the run, and he's going to be taken down. He can't get out of this one, and he's dropped back. At the mid stripe and a killer play for the Vikings and he's a little wobbled getting up. Timeout Vikings. Timeout Vikings. We'll step away. We'll be back with three seconds left. Take part. We're here to take over. I am the beast. In 1934, Bickford Ford opened their doors in Snohomish, Washington, and they've been an active part of the community ever since. So when you're looking for a new Ford truck, SUV, or hybrid, or if you want to take advantage of your current car's value, start at the place you can trust. The one that's been around for 89 years and is Western Washington's number one volume Ford dealership. Family owned Bickford Ford on Bickford Avenue in Snohomish or online at bickford.net. 
Dude, Arlington is destroying Ferndale. And we're back, and yeah, the Eagles, one of the top teams in the 3A here in Wesco. And a big thought it might be a match. Is there's another timeout now taken by the Lions. We're going to oh, stay here as our scoreboard operator right now, Coach Hannon. Motley Terrace up on Shorecrest, 20 0. Camus, let's about that Camus score. 35 23 over Kelso. That's a final. It's like the rest haven't gotten started. There must be Saturday games or something. So, yeah, the Grays Harbor League, also important south of Washington. Talking to head coach John Eagle, obviously, longtime coach there at Camus, two state championships. Kind of put that program on the map. Camus. Yeah, Camus. Yeah, yeah, nobody nobody had heard much about Camus until John got there and built that program. He, he knows how to build programs. So third and 27 now. Three seconds left to go. We'll see if they just throw the Hail Mary or what. Matson steps oh. up, looking. Now he's just going to run. Ah. Uh. And avoids a big hit down to the 32. And that's how this first half will end. The West Lynn, the 6A champions. 35, the 4A state championships. The Lake Stevens Vikings, 10. We'll be back. We'll take a break with more halftime festivities. You're watching Friday Night Football on STSPN, presented by Les Schwab Tire. Don't go away. Searching for meaning in a relentless world. Always connected, but somehow alone. Trapped by illusion. We offer another path where the battle to belong begins awakened by a calling united by purpose defined by the cause you fight for no one can ever take away you are in this room what it means to be among the few the proud. The Marines. Thanks to Les Schwab Tires, I'm a confident backseat driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, breathe in. Now watch your speed and breathe out. Good. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. Help keep drivers and backseat drivers safe with Les Schwab Tires.
with us. The new generation. The next level. Sending it big. Oh, oh my goodness! In for a good run, let's go. Come with us to the track, to the trails, to the slopes, to the surf, to the fight, to the race. Look at this! To the 4 a.m. starts, training harder, pushing further, hitting back, hard. To the fans, to the followers, and the haters. Come with us, to the blood, to the sweat, and the broken bones. You rehab. We never quit. We never give up. We take control. <laughs> to the world titles. Fast, cool, to the world's first. Fuck yeah. The world's best. UFC strawweight champion. Come with us. We're just getting started. It's going to be so much fun. I promise you. SWIC is an acronym, and it stands for Special Warfare Combatant Craft Crewman. You know, you, you can stand across from another guy and say, you know what, he's got your back. And, you know, that's the guy you're counting on. If, if something goes wrong, he's going to be there. In the end, we're, we're fighting for each other. Here on a team, you know, about 22 of us on the boat. You know him personally, so you know exactly whose life you have in your hands. Everyone's come together and everyone's sole mission is to do their job individually as best they can to benefit everyone else in the boat. I got a brotherhood and it's a, it's a real brotherhood and it's a loyal and honest brotherhood and that, that's what matters. Bickford Ford opened their doors in Snohomish, Washington, and they've been an active part of the community ever since. So when you're looking for a new Ford truck, SUV, or hybrid, or if you want to take advantage of your current car's value, start at the place you can trust. The one that's been around for 89 years and is Western Washington's number one volume Ford dealership. Family owned Bickford Ford on Bickford Avenue in Snohomish or online at Bickford.com. For every generation, it has started with the call to serve. Discovering the purpose and the belonging earned with the title. Learning to dig deep and push through adversity together. Defending our nation and its people. It is a life of great worth and reward. But Marines are never really finished serving. Their commitment comes full circle, visible in communities across our country. This is Semper Fidelis, always faithful, always Marine, marking a path for the next generation. Hudson Hardy out tonight, and he's Lake back Stevens first and ten. He's going deep first play. Now. Corner, Zach caught! Wow. The Inside Hill, the Zach 20, down to the 10. Oh, I'm doing good, doing good. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Uh, subscribe now. Exactly. The Everett Herald. Exactly. Let's do it. What's your impressions of this first half? Obviously, a lot of buildup. State champions. We know what happened last year. The game was kind of back and forth. Tell me your thoughts. 
Well, you know, Lake Stevens was in it there for a little bit early. Um, and then, you know, those two turnovers they had, you know, at their about their own 20 yard line, setting West Lynn up uh, inside the red zone, essentially. I mean, those were pretty killer. Uh, West Lynn's obviously a very talented and good team. And uh, if you, you turn the ball over in those spots against a team like that, it's going to be going to be a long night. Now, nobody knows Wesco 4A, 3A, 2A, 1A. And if there's anything else more than you. Three, three, four weeks in, what, what are you seeing here for the Western Conference League so far up here in Snohomish County? Well, you know, I think things are shaken out, you know, kind of kind of like we thought coming into the year. I mean, you know, despite, you know, the score we're seeing here tonight, you know, I think Lake Stevens has looked, you know, like the clear favorite in Wesco 4A. Um, you know, the teams behind them, uh, you know, there's there's been a gap and it looks like there still is. Um, Wesco 3A North really looks like a fun and exciting race. Uh, Ferndale and Arlington are playing tonight. Um, Arlington putting it on. Oh, they are. Our, yeah, we have a reporter there. I'm yeah. not, I wasn't sure what the score was. But uh, so them, uh, Marysville Pilchuck looks really good. Uh, I think Stanwood is still, you know, a quality team and someone to be, uh, you know, worried about facing too. So, I mean, that, that North race is going to be really fun to watch. Um, then in the South, I mean, Monroe looks really good. And, uh, you know, Mount Lake Terrace is having a really nice start to their season. And they play next week, uh, potentially an unbeaten versus unbeaten game, which could be a, a, a pretty interesting one. Yeah, absolutely. So you're the busiest guy around here this time of year. Anything else that we should be looking for? What do you what do you think of the second half? Let's just stay here. Non-conference. We're, it's exciting to get such a, a tremendous program from Oregon to come up here in the, in the home and home. Do you think you feel like Lake Stevens are going to get the ball here to start the second half? You think they can make this a game? Oh, well, I wouldn't count them out. I mean, I would saw what they did, uh, you know, last week against Bellevue. Uh, you know, a very good team. They were down 28 to seven at halftime, came back and won. And that's a Bellevue team that's going to run, run, run and melt the clock. And yeah. This West Lynn team likes to throw it a little more, so we'll, we'll see exactly. Uh, you know exactly how they try and wind down the clock at the end but lake stevens certainly has the firepower to try and get back in it now you haven't been covering the three rivers league down there in portland 6a have you i have not i have not <laughs> then i won't ask you about that lake because lake oswego is coming up next week for the for the lions oh really yeah tough okay. tough matchup for them home of kevin love that's true that's true all right zach harris how do they find you how do they go and subscribe and get all the great content i think again i'm biased but the greatest prep coverage almost in the state of washington on the western side i'll say oh you aren't even biased you're just correct man <laughs> <laughs> <That's true. laughs> but uh no you can follow me uh zach harris on, on twitter z-a-c-h-e-r-e-t-h um you know also follow our other reporters evan weederspoon nick patterson um Go to heraldnet.com, find all of our coverage there. Subscribe, you know, support lo support local journalism. Uh, this community is lucky to have a paper that's still going and, you know, going at the strength that we are right now. Read it every single day. Zach Hare, thanks for coming by. We'll get back football here. We'll take a quick break, and it should be the second half right here, Friday Night Football on STSPN.
1934, Bickford Ford opened their doors in Snohomish, Washington, and they've been an active part of the community ever since. So when you're looking for a new Ford truck, SUV, or hybrid, or if you want to take advantage of your current car's value, start at the place you can trust. The one that's been around for 89 years and is Western Washington's number one volume Ford dealership. Family-owned Bickford Ford on Bickford Avenue in Snohomish or online at bickford.net. generation the next level sending it big in for a good run let's go come with us to the track to the trails to the slopes to the surf to the fight to the race to the 4 a.m starts training harder pushing further hitting back hard to the fans, to the followers, and the haters. Come with us to the blood, to the sweat, and the broken bones. You rehab. We never quit. We never give up. We take control. To the world titles. To the world's first. The world's best. Come with us. We're just getting started. It's going to be so much fun. I promise you. SWIC is an acronym, and it stands for Special Warfare Combatant Craft Crewman. You know, you, you can stand across from another guy and say, you know what, he's got your back. And, you know, that's the guy you're counting on. If, if something goes wrong, he's going to be there. In the end, we're, we're fighting for each other. Full practice, switch doctor, request immediate hunt, extra, take it Here on the team, you know, about 22 of us on the boat. You know him personally, so you know exactly whose life you have in your hands. Everyone's come together and everyone's sole mission is to do their job individually as best they can to benefit everyone else in the boat. I got a brotherhood and it's a, it's a real brotherhood and it's a loyal and honest brotherhood and that, that's what matters. Welcome back, STSPN's presentation of Friday Night Football brought to you by Les Schwab Tires. Scott Oshman, Steve Hand, and Rod the Wedge Hentorn with you. Getting ready for the second half of this Clash of the Titans. And right now, Steve Hannon, the Lions with their roar a little bit more than the Vikings so far. Yeah, I'm still trying to get my mind around how we've got from 20 to 10 to 35. <laughs> 20 to 10, yeah. I've been struggling just trying to understand what happened those last few minutes of the second half. But uh, the score has gotten a little out of hand. But like you said, Lake Stevens gets the ball first. Maybe they can get down and score. When you look at the stats from the first half, they don't look outlandish to one side or the other. Lake Stevens has more first downs uh, right now, 14 to 12. The rushing yards are basically even, 115 to 107. Um, the passing the passing yards a little bit more, 198 for, for Wes Lynn and 123 for Lake Stevens. Both the quarterbacks have a pick. Um, so it feels like a, a 20 to 10 game. I mean, when you look at the stats and when you get the feel of the game, it feels like 2010. West Lynn might be 
maybe playing a little bit better, but I don't think they're playing 35 to 10 better. It, when you turn the ball over, field position has been key in this game. And when you're you're in your own end zone or very close, right on your side of the 20, you turn it over. That pick was critical, quick scores, and they had the 80-yard uh, touchdown run by Gus Donneberg right after getting a stop on fourth down. They went for it. Both teams being very aggressive. And you know what? High risk, high reward. And it hasn't paid off a couple times for the Vikings. And credit to West Lynn. They have taken advantage of it with some big, big plays. And West Lynn went for it on fourth down one time. Didn't get it. And Lake Stevens stopped them and then went right down and scored. That's, that was their only offensive drive that, for a touchdown. As we get ready, and we have been thrilled with the kicking performances by both sides tonight. Gage, Gage Herrick has been spectacular. And you know what, Lucas Mooring, both of them with 40 yarders. You just don't say that. I've been doing this 13 years. We don't say that much for high school kickers. So that's been a kick. Can't wait no for the kickoff. No pun kick intended. <laughs> Can't wait for the kickoff. Here we go. Here's Herrick. And he usually just boots it into the night. Here live from Lake Stevens High School. We're glad you're with us. Ron, the Wedge Henthorn, what's the feeling right? You're on the home side town, uh, sideline. What's going on down there? Well, it's a little confusing down here. I spent uh, try, a little bit trying to get a hold of Tom, and he's arguing with the uh, sideline referee and the main referee out here tonight, and he's not interested in talking at all right now. He says, I got work to do. Yeah, he's... What, what, what was his concern with the officials, Ronnie? Could you hear what he was talking about? I couldn't hear, but he wasn't happy. <laughs> that's, that's, that's well said, yes. Well, we got another half of this ball game coming up. Uh, Lake Stevens isn't out of this. They can come back, and we'll see if they can like they did, did against Bellevue. Absolutely. Colton Matson here from the 20 gets it on. There's Lamar, Jayshon Lamar. And he'll get a tough run and maybe get four to five yards. We didn't see a lot of that, Steve Hannon, in the first half by the Vikings. Yeah, I agree. I think they've had some success running the football. Um, you get down, you get behind, and you feel like you got to throw on every play. But you got to run the ball a little bit, too, and keep the defense off balance. Lamar with a critical fumble as they were inside the red zone in the first half. One of the two turnovers for the Vikings as they set up now second and five. Colt Matson MC set, the junior gets it down and it's Valera. And Valera has plenty of sideline room. Right almost hits our own Ron Legendor. <laughs> as you can hear the mic open down there, a big Vikings first down and some momentum here to start this second half. Is Ronnie still on his feet down there? I don't know. I could have made the tackle, but I didn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my money's always on you. Always on the wedge. Colton now. Jayshon Lamar to his right. Goes in, gets a chip block. They go the bubble screen. Far side. Get some room. Make somebody miss. And out into Lions territory, a big pickup there for number two, Stephen Lee Jr. He's had a heck of a ball game on both sides. And this is a jersey-saving tackle right there at the end. Just got him by the shirt. Or he could have been off to the races. And that's big 52. Ryan Holmes with that shirt-saving tackle, 6'2", 240. Big chunk plays by Lake Stevens to start the second half. Sitting first and 10, now on the Lions' side of the field at the 46-yard line. There you go. Matson gives it. Lamar still turning his feet, and he'll get three or four-yard line, but that's a good first down uh, pickup. I love that. Yeah, that's a. I think that's a great job. Get him. He's one of your best players, right? Let's get him the ball. He's got 318 yards coming into the night against three good opponents. He's also receiving, but got to get him the rock. Yeah, yeah, we haven't seen him at if the ball. If you're like Stevens. Yeah. So second and six now. Empty set. Started to get some pressure late in the first half. Matson quickly get it over. That's in and out of the hands of Jayshon Lamar. Good coverage there by Bo Dixon. Ball's a little low. It's going to be a tough catch. Now third and six, and this is... 
each series here gets into some critical conversions, Steve and, Hannon. And they are they are <laughs> deep enough here, I think, on Westland's side of the field that this might be a two down ser- you know territory situation. But you've got to get some yards on this play. Wouldn't mind seeing a run play here. If you are setting up absolutely for that fourth down, Lamar, they're going to get it right okay. back over to Brown. David Brown, and he is cut down by Josea Molden. Just a yard short. Right in front of Ron the Wedge Henthorne and leaves a fourth and short. Patty, any old bowling ball right up the middle on this one? What do you think? I'm with you. I'm with you 100%, Ronnie. Lamar in the ball game just to the right of Colton Matson. Give it to that kid. The big fellas up front, the center, Chase Ingram, a senior, and we'll see if they can convert. Fake it. Now they're oh. going to go to pass. Matson, he's in trouble. He's got to get rid of it. And it's intercepted. By number 80, Gus Donnerberg. Oh, my, a disastrous fourth down. And now it's first down, as you see. Donnerberg, who's having quite a night. It wasn't as bad as an incompletion. About the same thing. Correct. You I get, guess. Yeah, you got to get rid of that ball. And he did and tried to make a, a play happen there. I mean, Westland's going to get the ball in the same spot regardless. His second interception tonight for Colton Matson. Just keep in mind, he's at over 800 yards. Only had three coming in tonight, and he's got two in one game. Now, this Westland team, is they're ball hawks, and they're putting pressure on him, and he's running around back there. And on fourth down play, that's, that's a recipe for disaster. Well, we talked to defensive coordinator Anthony Newman. And he said, we want to speed the process. Here's Gilroy. He's got plenty of time. He's going to go downfield, and it's in and out of the hands. Of Donnie Weidman, a good coverage there by Valera. Good defense right there. Stayed right with the man that he was supposed to be on. The ball's in the air. He broke to the receiver and knocked the ball out. Really good, really good fundamentals right there being played. Second and 10. As the Lake Stevens fan, I tried to go get you a soda. Myself one too, and it's packed. There's no way. The line was out the... Stadium door practically. Second and 10 here, 9.04 left to go in the third. Gilroy flings it back. It's caught. There's Donovan. Oh. Gus again breaking tackles. Still on his feet. 40. Finally pushed out of bounds by two Vikings, and he finally goes down. And Gus Donovan, how you doing? Boy, that kid has in the passing game dominated the game with his ball and that is his hands in the ball he is having he wants a t-shirt i mean i, I can't even think of another player that, oh. t- that we could give it to he is having quite a night wow so first and ten now in vikings territory fakes the hand up gilroy it's tipped at the line of scrimmage it'll fall to the ground incomplete and a good job by 80 in black that time, Keegan Howard to knock it down. Right in the quarterback's face, right off the snap. Nobody touched him. He ran right in and, and right into the throwing lane where the quarterback was trying to throw the ball, got his hands up and got it tipped. And defensively for the Vikings, do you want to bring more pressure? Gilroy's really had plenty of time tonight so far. Oh, they're going to get that was ugly. Stuff. Ryan Vandenbrick, 23 in white. Looks confused, and that'll put him back. Lake Stevens likes to run that 4-2-5 defense, and, and it, it makes it more difficult to bring pressure off the edge in that in that defensive set. Uh, but inside linebackers, they could certainly bring uh, to try to cause some havoc inside. It just Westland's been attacking outside this whole game, so. The Vikings missing a couple key players. Same thing with the Lions. Gilroy back to pass. Now gets pressure, has to get rid of it. It's Uh-oh. intercepted. Uh-oh. David Brown, his second INT tonight. He breaks a tackle. He's to the 30, to the inside, the 20, and down at the 15. And David Brown says not quite yet. And Donnerberg, I think, pulled a hamstring there. Was that Donnerberg that he's trying? No, it's 16. 
Wow, that's a big play. Finally dragged down by Ryan Holmes and David Brown. We saw him made an incredible catch earlier. He came up a little hobbled. He's been limping around, but that was a heck of an interception. And now Lake Stevens right back close to where they were. Yeah, he's a difference maker. We, we, he, he, he was a difference maker last year for Lake Stevens. And just continuing that theme this year, he is all over the field. Uh, the uh, the, the, the uh, receiver that was supposed to get that ball, kind of he came up limping after that interception. Okay, yeah, the receiver, the intended receiver, a little broken up. And now the ball back. Into the Vikings' hands, deep in Lions territory. This is a counter against Jay Sean. Lamar breaks free, has one guy, pulls him over, almost in, and he's down at the three-yard line. Jay Sean Lamar showing some power. And it looks like Jay Sean may, not, may have a little injury as well. His shoulder looks like he's got an issue with his left arm. And now he comes running off, and he's attended to quickly. We'll check on him. So, Tala Rai comes in. We saw him. He had a few carries in the first half. But here come the Vikings. First and goal from the three. Fake it. Now Matson. Empty. Oh, nice. Touchdown, done. Vikings. Colton Matson is fourth rushing touchdown of the year. Wow, did he read that defensive end as he slammed down to the running back and he pulled that ball late and was able just to jog into the end zone. Nobody anywhere around him. Look at the defense. Beautifully done. Absolutely. I didn't see the, the – was he have a good the corner over there? You're breaking up a little bit, Ronnie. I said, did he have a good block? Uh, you're breaking up. You got to get closer. So here we go, Lucas Mooring, the 6'1", sophomore for the extra point. You don't think going for two here. The kick is up, and it is good. And it brings it to 35-17 with 7.53 left to go in the third. We're going to keep it right here. So, Steve Hannon, it didn't quite happen like we talked about getting the ball to start the second half. But <laughs> through, yeah. through trials and tribulations and a tremendous interception and run back by David Brown, the Vikings now have some life. It's been an amazing game of big plays on both sides. And this has not been a humdrum, methodical no. three yards here, four yards there. It is big play after big play on both the offense and the defensive side. And and that, that put Lake Stevens back into a position where they can play a good defensive series here, hopefully not give up any points and go score again. And this is a new game. As we mentioned, both teams banged up here. Hudson Hardy not able to go. Big number six, the junior running back for yeah. the Lions out tonight. And Tom Try, he's missing a couple of his big horses. But this has turned it. It has not been boring. Like you said, you look at the score and you think, oh, it looks like a boring game. No, no, no not at all. This has been a lot of fun to watch. I mean, your action per minute here has been, oh, nice. oh a little... Offside kick, and did Mooring receive it? Yes, he did. They're saying it is Vikings football. And right on cue. Gage Solomon, 44, comes up with it. I couldn't tell if Lucas Mooring, the kicker, got it. Let's take a look. It's beautifully executed. Absolutely perfect. It no, like, it was 44. Gage Solomon comes up, the 5'11 senior, and all of a sudden the Vikings. They've got momentum. They just had a touchdown, an onside kick. They're on the other team's side of the field to start the drive. Another thing we do not see that often in high school football. It's, it's, this is the second we've seen this season. Earlier we had a Glacier Peak Snohomish game, and Snohomish yeah. was down in the fourth corner, hit an onside kick, and they got it. It's so hard to get an onside kick, and that was so beautifully executed by Lake Stevens. 
to Colton Matson up, and we'll check to see if it look that is Jay Sean Lamar back in the in the game as there's a discussion by the officials here. Yeah, what are they talking about? Not sure. Brian Clute, Omar Kardahi, Joel Taylor, Scott yeah. Roan, Reed Baker. It is a power meeting in the middle of the field, and now they're breaking up. Yeah. And we're working on Ron's mic right now. We'll see if we can get more information. He comes over and talks to Tom Try. On the bottom of your screen might be out of frame. Tom seems confused about what he's being what he's being told. Looks like he's accepted it. He's moved on. He's ready to call a play. Well, it's on the West Lynn 46-yard line. That's where they'll start. Ups and downs tonight for quarterback Colton Mott Matson. And we're ready to play. And Westland's put pressure on him. So, you know, some of those mistakes he's made, he's been under duress. As now the White Hat, our head referee, Brian Kluke, getting positioned, had to go talk to John Eagle. And here's the whistle. Here we go. Back in action. Matson back to pass. And it's caught. And he gets loose. Valera gets a Vikings first down inside the 35 to the 32-yard line. And we've seen this all night. Lake Stevens has been able to move the ball against West Lynn. They need to cap this off with a touchdown here. And all of a sudden, the senior, nine in black, Paul Varela, has made it some big plays. First and 10 now for the Vikings. Matson looking over, the whole team looking over. Trips to the near side. David Brown on the bottom of your screen. They get it over to Valera. He misses one. He's finally taken down by big 75, but not after a gain. Steven Del Guaydice, the 6'5 senior with the Vikings in action playing defensive line and he ran to the sideline to get to that bubble screen which is what the defensive coordinator was talking so about anthony newman yes nine kids they want around the ball at all times pursuit relentless pursuit is the motto there for defensive coordinator anthony newman here we go first and ten mattson fakes it now he's in trouble dumps oh, it off he gets it to Lamar, he breaks one tackle. He gets out of bounds inside the 15. We'll see where they mark him. Oh, they're going to mark him back. Why? Around the 17. What happened? Not sure. We're going to. Oh, he stepped out of bounds. There he goes. He stepped out. Good job by the officials. So they're are. getting Lamar, though. You feel like he's getting in rhythm. Yeah, and I think you got to keep feeding that kid the ball. Matson, second and five now. 6.46 left to go in this third quarter. He gets it. Lamar's go. got a hole. There you go. Lamar to the five. Did he get in? Stop. No, they'll put him down at the one-yard line. Giant Jayshon Lamar. And, and again, it's execution up front. Look at the hole he's got to run through because the Lake Stevens offensive line just executed a play. They've been able to do this all night. They execute plays and they get yards. Touchdown saving tackle by Hunter Haynes for the Lions. So here we go from the one in motion. Valera, fake it. Oops. Lamar cannot get it. He is denied. They're going to put him right back there. Should have been maybe a loss. And the Lions defense comes up big. Wow. We saw just a big white wave of jerseys just ran right over the top of the purple shirts. And that's big 15, Baron Naoni. Some people on the four star, some people on the five star. He's got big time Saturday football looking at him. Yeah, there's a few of them out there tonight. So second and goal now from the one. Fake uh -oh. it, go the wrong uh -oh. way, broken play. He drops it off. Is it caught? I still don't see a signal. 
Touchdown, Vikings! Did you see a signal? I still didn't even see a signal, but it's David Brown. I do know that. There is the white hat signal. Big touchdown for the Vikings. 35-23. Here you take another look at it. Unbelievable catch and great coverage there. Yeah, that play did not look right. Yeah. But they made it happen. Oh, my. And the West Lynn coaches looking on. And here's Mooring as the ch crowd chants his name. It's up and it is good, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Text somebody, Yellow. call somebody. We got a ball game, 35-24. 5.32 left in the third. In the third. In 1934, Bickford Ford opened their doors in Snohomish, Washington. And they've been an active part of the community ever since. So when you're looking for a new Ford truck, SUV, or hybrid, or if you want to take advantage of your current car's value, start at the place you can trust. The one that's been around for 89 years and is Western Washington's number one volume Ford dealership. Family owned Bickford Ford on Bickford Avenue in Snohomish or online at Bickford.net. Scott Oshman, Steve Hannon in the wedge, the Ron Henthorn there. Uh, Ronnie, we got you back, I hear. Yeah, I think I'm back. <laughs> Technical difficulties never never ceased. Well, it's been a great game, guys. Yeah, Vikings are back as Mooring uh -oh. kicks it off. It's going to be taken at the one. Uh -oh. Danny Weidman. Cruising pass. Oh. There's a flag, and he's finally taken down right at the 50. By number 45, right in front of us, Lucas Mooring, the kicker. There's two flags on that. It might be coming back a long ways. <laughs> One way back there. Oh, there is. You're right. Now, we heard about Danny Weidman. He is electric, the 5'11 junior. And we'll see what this is about. I think I'd go back to onside kicks if I was like Stevens. Yeah. <laughs> One's declined, and it looks like one is taken here. Is out of your screen to the little left. We have our white hat. You've talked about the big plays, Steve, and it has been one big play after the other. It's been remarkable. It's it has just been a game of momentum. <laughs> And it's 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 been a lot of fun to watch. Even it was 35 to 10, it was fun how we got there, and now it's 35 to 24, and it's just been fun to get us to this point. And now we've got a big moment in the game here for West Lynn. Big difference than last year. West Lynn putting it on 45-6, not here. And but here come the Big Lions offense. They're going to start at their own seven-yard line, and they can strike in a hurry. Ryan Vandebrick, the running back, and he gets the ball, although there's whistles before. And does that delay a game? The Lake Stevens fans like whatever it is, they like it. Legal procedure. Ball start. And that'll put them half the distance and now the defense is feeling it from the crowd, Steve. Yes, agreed. We're feeling it from the crowd right now. Our, our cameras are <laughs> bouncing. They love their football up here in Lake Stevens. They had a lot to cheer about over the years, that's for sure. So still first and 15 now, backed up on their own three. Bear Gilroy. And he gets it to Vanderbrink. Uh -oh. Vanderbrink, a big hole. He makes up for the penalty and much more out to the 30-yard line. And just like that, the Lions have bridge.
team captains. He's one of their, their big time players. Senior, 6'2 senior, Mason Turner. It fakes the hand up. Now Gilroy going over and cut down. He wants a flag trying to go to Hunter Haynes. And you do see a flag. Yeah. I'd like to see that. Let's see if their feet just get tangled up here, Scott. I thought that they just, I think the feet are just getting tangled, but maybe he does grab him. Oh, and Valero looks a little hobbled coming up as well. Boy, they are dropping like flies here. Yeah. Oh, they're going to call holding. Ugh. Okay. Ronnie, did you see anything down there? Well, I saw the same thing you saw. It sure looked like he got his feet tangled up, but he was awful close to him. Maybe he grabbed him. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. 4.05 left to go in the third quarter. Lake Stevens with a big answer there, bringing it from 35 to 24. And Lake okay. Stevens is in a 4-3. Look at all the defenders on the line or by the line of scrimmage. It looks like a 4-4 four, four almost. Hands on the near side for West Lynn. They're going to hand it off. Vandenberg stuffed by the Vikings defense for a loss. Yeah. And Keegan Howard, one of the guys there. That was a 4-4 that, that four, four defensive front. You can see the entire defense is right by the line of scrimmage. They were guessing run. And that young man, number five, did a fantastic job. Esteban Sedano, the wow. senior, got in there and tripped Vandebrink up. And now here's Gilroy. He's going to go deep sideline, going for Haynes. Haynes catches it, bounce. but was he inbounds? No, he was not. What a catch, though, by Hunter Haynes. Great catch. Great catch, great throw. And the quarterback had a defender right in his face, right behind him. And just got it off in time. Just a little bit out of bounds. Third down and long. Third and 13. And now they... It's, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Well, Lake Stevens just got out of that 4-4. Four, that four, four. They're now they're back under the 4-2-5 to, to stop the pass. Vanderbrink, the running back for the Lions. Here comes Gilroy. Going deep, nope. far side. Danny Bynes. Danny Weidman is double covered. It falls incomplete. And they'll bring up fourth and 13. I believe this is the first time we've seen them punt tonight. Is that right it or no? It could, could be. And I also, with 320, this seems shocking. The Lions haven't scored in the second half. Shocking. <laughs> Have they only had the ball once, though, right? Is that their first possession of this half? I think it might be their second. I'm not sure. Again, our statistician. Yeah. Did Lake Stevens go down and score, then do the onside kick, and then that was the first time that... Then uh, there was a turnover, though. Okay. We got paperwork to fill out. We'll oh, check it. Yeah, we'll check that. It's the first punt I've seen all night. Yeah, this is... And Gage Herrick does the punting. He almost gets it blocked. And it's taken oh, no. a drop. Oh, no. And it is the Lions ball. Oh, my goodness. Valera right there. I thought he had it. I wasn't sure if he was going to call for a fair catch or what. And another huge turnover for the Vikings. Boy, right when you feel like they finally stopped West Lynn, they had to punt to him. They scored two touchdowns to make up the score. This was going to be the drive that we've been waiting to see all night, and then we get a flub on the punt. Say again. And the Vikings. Is that number nine that fumbled? Yeah, number nine. Paul Varela, the usually sure-handed senior. Glacier Peaks had their uh, yeah. share of yes, they have. get away from the ball. So here they go in great shape once again. We saw this movie in the first half. Good fortune there. Good play. Here's Vandebrick. He's just going to move the pile across the five into the four. He is a hard running back. He's going to get his yards when he's going downhill. Sedano with the tackle. 
call it second and three here, under 2.50 to go. Just as I said, they hadn't scored in the second half. Vanderbrick, he's cut down by Big Keegan. Wow, great play. Keegan Howard flexing a little bit. Boy, he, that kid is limping around. He's hurting. He's got he's got tape all over his body trying to keep it together, and he just stepped up in the hole and hit that big back. Two freight trains slamming together and right down there by the goal line. They keep the senior Vanderbrink in the ball game, but now are we going to get a timeout? Timeout, timeout Lions. We'll Third take a, and three. Yeah, we'll take a timeout, see what happens here. You're watching Friday Night Football on STSBN, presented by Les Schwab Tires. Thanks to Les Schwab Tires. I'm a confident backseat driver, but mine's a little stressed about spending. Remember, breathe in. Now watch your speed and breathe out. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. Help keep drivers and backseat drivers safe with Les Schwab tires. 1934, Bickford Ford opened their doors in Snohomish, Washington, and they've been an active part of the community ever since. So when you're looking for a new Ford truck, SUV, or hybrid, or if you want to take advantage of your current car's value, start at the place you can trust. The one that's been around for 89 years and is Western Washington's number one volume Ford dealership. Family owned Bickford Ford on Bickford Avenue in Snohomish or online at Bickford.net. Third and three. Corbett and got it. Gilroy's got it. He gets to the edge. Touchdown, Lions. What another great play we saw from Colton Matson on the other side for the Vikings. Touche, says Bear Gilroy. It's the exact same play. It's just a zone read. The quarterback reads that defensive end. He crashes down on the back. He keeps it and uh, strolls on into the end zone for a touchdown for West Lynn. Here comes Herrick for the extra point. Oh, uh -oh. there's going to be an offside Something went on wrong there. Mr. 54 for the Vikings, Mason Turner. <laughs> 208 left in the third. They finally scored in the second half. I mean, it's been a tempted offensive second half here so far for West Lynn. <laughs> and, and you feel like how deflating that must be for Lake Stevens to drop that punt, give up the touchdown. But we've they've demonstrated that they can go down the field in a hurry and get right back in the game in the score wise but also emotionally right back into the game so let's see what happens next scott well where has been an outstanding back and forth game so far as there's a lot of conversation here they get the penalty is on the vikings but they decline it and now it's interesting here it will set up again from the 10. Sacks at the hole, the kick is up, and of course, it is good. So here we go again. They had it to 11, they stretch it now, 40 to 24, and now we'll see what the Vikings can do. Still plenty of time in this ball game, only 2-8 left in the third. It's been a long third quarter. The first quarter felt like this. <laughs> Holy smokes, what is going to happen next? We'll see right after this. Scott Oshman, Steve Hannon, and Ron the Wedge Henthorne. Ronnie, the resiliency for the Vikings, we talked about it, 28-7 down at Bellevue. They were down, they've been down before, but can they keep coming back? What's the emotional temperature down there at the Lake Stevens sideline? 
Well, right now, I think it's really good. Uh, you know, a little error is a little error in the scoreboard shows a big difference, but these kids are ready to fight. Uh, I'm looking for them to come back and score this time. Herrick with the kickoff here. We'll see if they're going to start from the 20. Boots it. Yes, indeed, they will. Well, they, they're they familiar with the 20. They know what they got to do. Glad you're with us. If it's your first time here at STSPN, you can follow us on all the socials, YouTube channel. Please subscribe. 13 years of streaming live prep sports for absolutely zero cost. And thank you to our sponsors and everybody involved. School districts, Lake Stevens, they're always great here to us. We come in. What a community service we provide. It Did is, you see the sign on the door? It is tremendous. I Welcome, did, STSPN. No, no. Oh. Look at that. Well, look, we got our yeah, own. Yeah, welcome door. STSPN. We got our own door on our press box. This is very nice. They're lovely here. All right. Lovely is what Colton Matson, the junior quarterback, wants to do here for the Vikings football team. And the crowd is ready to get into it. First and 10 from his own 20. Has a little bit of time. Now gets up in the pocket, pointing. Directing traffic. This time he couldn't connect. There's a flag on the play trying to go to Brown. Yeah, Xavier Harris had his hands all over him. He was definitely interfering. And Xavier Harris, the junior, he has no idea. What did I do wrong? Yeah, that's what they always say. <laughs> you can see it again on the replay. Pass interference. It's defense. Automatic first down. Automatic first down. And that'll move the chains up for Lake Stevens as we hit the two-minute mark here in the third quarter. 35-10 at halftime. Interceptions, fumbles, we have everything. Empty set here for Colton Matson. It's like West Lynn's bringing bodies. Here's the pressure rolling out. Has to dump it, tipped Great. up in the air. It'll fall out of bounds. He was trying to go to Jackson Lewis. Really good ball skills right there for the Westland guy. And he's right on that receiver. Gets his hand out front, tips the ball away while pressure is being put on, on the quarterback. Uh, we saw them line up at the line of scrimmage. They were bringing bodies. We see this in college. We see this in the NFL, and I understand it. But the the spinning backwards that quarterbacks do when they're getting pressure is uh, ill-advised. Just think Russell teams. Wilson. Yes. Matson back to pass. A little pressure. He gets it off, and it's in and out of the hands. And, again, that's Xavier Harris on the coverage. But now we have... The intended receiver, number 15, Jesse Lewis, down and having trouble getting back up here. Yeah, I mean, as well as Lake Stevens' offense has looked at times tonight, there's also been times where the receivers have not helped out their quarterback. Yeah, and that'll leave McCosley. That's a third and 10 here with a buck 48 left to go as like Lewis shoulder. comes off. There's Hankies on the field, too, guys. Oh, oh we got flags, correct. Didn't even notice that. It's like a holding penalty. Ron doing his best Tim Boyle impression there. Big shout out to our uh, our buddy and always usually in the booth here, Tim Boyle, heading over to the homeland where he's from, the Pullman Palouse, to watch the Cougars take on the Beavers on a great game tomorrow. What is it? What is it? The 15 ranked Cougar? Yes, both ranked. Both ranked. Yeah, should be a big time game. So third and ten for Colton Matson. Jayshon Lamar behind him. Rolls out to his right. Now he's going deep. He's, he's got, got a man. man. Caught. Brought down. Wow. Stephen Lee Jr. And a big first down for the Vikings. Just play after play after play in this game. That is a gigantic play by the Lake Stevens offense. Wow, what a catch. Wasn't like Xavier Harris wasn't on him. No, exactly. I mean, the good defense and the ball was up right where it needed to be. The receiver went up and got it. And uh, Lake Stevens is on Westland's side of the field. First and 10 at the Westland 45. 
Empty set now. Lamar trying to protect him. Now he's got trouble. Matson has to get rid of it. And this is he kind of just dumps it and gets rid of it. Smart trying point. to go to Jackson Lewis back in the ball game after being shooken up. Smart play by the quarterback. Did just the play wasn't gonna work. It wasn't there. He's getting a lot of pressure. Find a spot on the turf to throw it and let's try to let's try the next play. Well, John Eagle, the head coach here, second year head coach for the Westland Lions. He is getting his hands full. I know the score doesn't look like it, but it feels like he's getting a handful. Yeah, absolutely true. I agree 100%. Second and 10 for Matson. Fakes it to Lamar. Now he's looking. Oh, Gets he's it over. Valera. Valera wants some redemption of his own, and he's taken down hard, but not until he gets up to the 25. A big hit there by Big 33 in white. Evan Davis. Big hit, but big yards for Lake Stevens. And, and uh, now, we're, again, this game has been so much fun to watch. Just big plays and big moments and swings and everything you could ask for. You got to feel good for Varela getting the redemption he had the muff punt and the fumble that led to the last lion touchdown Matson now gets it to lamar lamar tries to make a cut and it's not going to go well for him runs right into big ryan holmes 52 and white 6 2 240 just a junior we have seen both these teams execute really well tonight not a lot of flags i know there's been a couple but for the most part, these are two really good teams, really well coached and really executing well. That's what's made this game so much fun to watch. It's like we're down about 15 seconds here. See what they do if they try and get a playoff. We're going to head to the fourth quarter. Leaves them second and nine. Man, race against the clock. They will get the playoff. Matson goes back across. <gasps> Brown! 10-5! Touchdown, Vikings! David Brown does it again! Dude, that kid might get a shirt tonight by the time this thing's over with. Holy smokes. Poor tackling, to be honest, by, by right there. 27 is going to wrap up and haul him down. And uh, Every... doesn't get it done. And we were teasing Anthony Newman, who still holds some records at University of Missouri on most tackles in a single season. He said, if the kids don't tackle, that's my fault. Yeah, that's right. Well, Not really. I mean, he doesn't do it. But they, they obviously, he knows the touch out of the tackle. But a great David Brown having a heck of a he night really here tonight. It was great to see him back in the game. He got hurt early on. He's just sucked it up. Clock is at zeros. We're heading the fourth. But now... 19th year head coach Tom Try does want to try and catch the points as it's 30-42 to make it a 10-point ball game. So big two-point try here for Lake Stevens. I just I just think I want to keep it within that two-possession game. I I think I kick it here, but oh. 17. Jason Lamar behind him. They roll right. They look. He's got a player. He catches it, but it's not. In the end zone. And Stephen Lee Jr., they had the play, just not enough room, and then they'll stay at 42-30. So we head to the fourth. Fireworks here on a Friday night in September. Stay with us. STSBN Friday Night Football brought to you by Les Schwab Tire. 1934, Bickford Ford opened their doors in Snohomish, Washington, and they've been an active part of the community ever since. So when you're looking for a new Ford truck, SUV, or hybrid, or if you want to take advantage of your current car's value, start at the place you can trust. The one that's been around for 89 years and is Western Washington's number one volume Ford dealership. Family-owned Bickford Ford on Bickford Avenue in Snohomish or online at bickford.net.
We keep saying it's Steve Hansen or Steve Hansen. I almost call you Steve Hansen. Steve Hannon, head coach or head coach. I'm 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 so many fireworks now. I'm losing it. <laughs> I, it just you look at the score, right? And you just don't understand if you've been watching this football game. If you're going to see the box score tomorrow, it is not indicative whatsoever of what we are witnessing. If they showed the highlights of this game, you would see as many in purple as you'd see in white. Yeah. We're going to run out of tape with the highlights of this. <laughs> By the way, your name is Scott Oshman. Thank you very much. Ron the Wedge Henthorn down there. <laughs> Lucas Mooring is the name of the kicker for the Lake Stevens Vikings. Nobody back right this second. Well, they have somebody at the 20. They're getting ready for an onside kick. Oh, this one's booted into the end zone, and Danny... Whiteman can't get there. It barely went in the end zone. Yes, it did. So the Lions will start this journey from their own 20-yard line. First and 10. Okay. What's going to happen in the I, I don't know. I mean, is it going to be a pick six? Is it going to be an 80-yard <laughs> touchdown toss? A pick six, right? Yeah. Speaking of first, is this the first time the Lions have had to go 80 yards? Uh, might be. It might be. It's a, that's a good point, I think. I, I don't know the answer to that. Boy, they are stat stuffing tonight as Baird Gilroy, the junior, he hands it off. Vandebrink. God, he's a hard runner, that kid. Or maybe that's Johnson. Check that. That is Cade Johnson, 26, the senior. That goal line back, they like to stick him in there around the goal line, and, man, he just pounded ahead for five yards. Johnson is well having a great night tonight. Now they put Cade over in the slot. Second and five. Cade gets it on the right side, makes a move, tries to cut up, nothing there. Good tackling and pursuit by the Vikings. Mason Turner and the gang, and he'll set up a third and five. And West Lynn must just be a no-huddle team because this is a time when you'd like to use as much clock as possible, and they're, they're going no-huddle and snapping the ball pretty quick. He think. got a couple, so it's third and three there. Six five, two hundred and fifteen pound junior Gilroy back. Passes caught. Fifty. Haynes. See you later. No. Take oh, it down go. by the one yard line. What a play by David Brown. Who else? And that I'm sorry is not Haynes. Check Wyatt Smiley number seven, the six four junior with the catch. Boy, and what a run. Everything he's got, he's putting in those shoes. Goal. Just just a simple deep slant route hits him right in the money. And I remember before the ball snapped, I thinking, gosh, just run the ball, get your first down, and, and, and there, here you go, another big. They don't want a they don't want a three yard first down. No cloud of dust tonight. So Wyatt Smiley gets a huge play. Wow. And is it again he in for the touchdown? Yeah, why aren't the officials letting us know what's going on? Oh, uh, that's sideline official calling. Cade, oh, he did. Yeah, there you go. Cade Johnson with a touchdown. Another Lions touchdown. Here, we'll take another look. And there it is. He's tripped up. I couldn't see from our angle there, and there was no definitive call by right. the officials. Right. So here comes Gage Hurricane for another extra point. I wonder if this one will hit the scoreboard. It is up and it is good once again. So all of a sudden the Lions explode and make it 49-30. But don't go away. Oh no, because something else is going to happen. 10:21 left. 
McDaniel's Do It Center is located in beautiful Snohomish, Washington. Locally owned and operated for over 40 years, they are proud to provide the Snohomish Valley with exceptional hardware, tools, lawn and garden, and sporting goods products. Their commitment to delivering legendary customer service and their outstanding employees continue to make McDaniel's the best and one of the most recognized Do It Best centers in the nation. Stop by and experience for yourself the difference between McDaniel's and the big box stores. Discover why so many people are choosing to shop at McDaniel's. We're not here to take part, we're here to take over. I am the beast. Get your headset off. Yeah, I had a headset off. Yeah, sorry, because it's like 130 degrees in the shade here. Yeah, so what I was just saying is start working on your player of the game, guys. At the voice of Ron the Wedge Hentor, and it's 1021 in the fourth. We do have an adrenaline fundraiser player of the game, also a Les Schwab lineman of the night. The kick oh, is going to be taken at the one-yard line. Can we have it again? Unbelievable. All the way it goes. Almost goes Stephen Lee Jr. All the way down to the Lions 25-yard line. My goodness. What a game. The Vikings came to play football tonight, Scott. And he just started to run out of gas. And it's the kicker here. Not only can he kick, but he is a good tackler as well. Steve Hannon speechless in the booth. How many... <laughs> How many of these plays are we going to witness in one night? Jeepers, creepers. Every time the ball snaps, it's 35, 40 yards. Big chunks. Colton Matson now. Empty set. He's going to try and get a strike. Here's Lamar, and he gives it to Lamar. Sweep on the far side. Lamar, patient, getting, waiting for his blockers. Pushes up, and he'll be close to a Lake Stevens first down. Good opening play. Get the ball, get a handoff, get everybody pulling outside and run. Look at the big 76 out there leading the way. Good block. No holding. It's just a well executed fly sweep right there by Lake Stevens. Second and one now at the 19. Both teams no huddle. Varela now in motion comes out. There's. Lamar, he'll take it right up the gut. And he fumbles oh. the ball, and it's Lake, it's Westland's ball. Unbelievable. The second fumble of the night for Jay Sean Lamar. Unreal. There it is. It is out. It's out. Right down at the goal line. How many times have the Vikings been just about to strike and pull within, I don't even know, two scores and then a massive turnover? They're going to watch this film tomorrow and just how many, just giving the game away. And Wes Lynn takes advantage. Absolutely. Great job by Wes Lynn. We couldn't see on the replay and who popped that loose, but just tremendous defense there by the Lions. And Gilroy. Back in business. It's time he hands it off. Good pursuit by the Vikings that time. Really good defense. Defensive end set the edge over there so the Westland guy couldn't get outside. And then the rest of the pursuit caught up. And that's 25 of the game for the Lions and White. Cal Royer, 5'10 junior, getting some snaps. They're going to give a loss of one. Or two here, which is rare in high school football. You and Tim. It is. So second and 12 or second and 11. Here's Gilroy Bax. It's tipped at the go. line of scrimmage. Almost an interception. Varela had a shot at it. And now third and 11. There was a chance that that ball would have got through the line of scrimmage. We were going to be looking at another Purple's got a shirt chasing a white shirt. It has been a turnover 
Palooza here tonight. Third and long, can Lake Stevens get off the field? Either they will or you're going to see a 90-some yard touchdown. Yeah. That's how this night's going. They're bringing pressure. Gilroy, he launches it. This time Haynes brings it down, but no, he doesn't. He had it in his hands, and Varela there chit-chatting with big three Hunter Haynes. He's giving up some inches there. Ronnie, well, that was right in front of you, my friend. Yeah, a little bit of conversation with both number three and number nine there, and they got uh, talked to by the linesman there. Uh, but that was a great defensive play. He had it at the top of his catch. He got it with two hands and, and the, couldn't hold on. The defender does a great job of not giving up on the play, and he strips the ball out on the way down. So only the second punt tonight for the Westland 6A champions. Still eight minutes to go in this game. Unreal. And he gets a boomer. And everybody vacating the area as they've had a buff punt already and gave the Lions incredible field positions one time. So yeah. Lake Stevens will start on their own side of the field at the 43. Great starting position. There is a flag on the play we just learned. Ronnie, have any idea what we might be in for on that flag? Just holding. Good guess. Holding. <laughs> in fact, he is one for one. Never doubt the wedge, Steve nice Hannon. Nice call. Nice call, Ronnie. Never doubt the wedge. Nah. I had a 50 50 shot. <laughs> And you hit him 50-50% of the time. <laughs> yep. Just a seesaw battle. I, it is unimaginable that this score is out of whack. As you see, it's going to go on Lake Stevens as they're walking back. It's now kind of the fall air, a little Christmas now. And they're going to be pushed back here. When you look at the stats, you wouldn't see this big of a discrepancy. But when Lake Stevens had made has made their mistakes, they've been costly yeah, mistakes. Yeah, massive. The turnovers, turnovers have just, it's cliche, but where they've turned the ball over has yeah. been just brutal. Correct. If you're a Vikings fan. Mattson back. Varela in motion. He's, he's open. And Wide there he open. is again. They had this play the earlier. Big crack, and he's. Gets out of bounds, and the freshman coming to play, Josiah Moulton, putting a good hit. Yep, there he is. It's that half motion back out the other side. He's very quick. That's a really good tackle by the corner. Got his shoulder in there right into the hip, head out of the play. Good good technique being taught at West Lynn. Six-yard gain. Leaves them at second and four. With 8 12 left to go in the ball game. Down 19. He's got Plenty of time. Uh, now he's getting pressure. He has to roll. Looking, looking. Great and job. And he just throws it out of bounds and leave third and four. Great job by the quarterback there. There's just nothing there. We've seen Madsen try to make plays when plays aren't there, and it's been disastrous. Young man learning a lesson there and just throwing the ball away. Let's get it on the next one. You see Naomi, number 15, in your screen there. It's hard to miss him. And when he is up against the other players, 6'5", 240. Yeah. <laughs> Third and four. You got to think every play now, every four, everything's fourth, fourth down territory. Now they get it to Lamar. Lamar cuts up. Just, just crosses. Little Where little are they going to mark him? Is he going to get the first? Looks like he's short from maybe here. Hard, maybe. So you think it, you're going to go for it here, huh, Scott? Yeah, I think you kind of have to. At eight minutes? I think you have to. Are they two touchdowns down? What are they? Oh, yeah. Two and a half. Yeah, I think you have to, right? And they will. Empty set. Matson. Now, 
Lamar, and it's tipped, but almost caught, and it'll turn it over. Trying to go to Brown again. Interesting play choice there. And they will walk off the field as we got a hurt Lion. It's official timeout, and we'll step away as the Lions come up big one more time back after this. Bickford Ford opened their doors in Snohomish, Washington, and they've been an active part of the community ever since. So when you're looking for a new Ford truck, SUV, or hybrid, or if you want to take advantage of your current car's value, start at the place you can trust. The one that's been around for 89 years and is Western Washington's number one volume Ford dealership. Family owned Bickford Ford on Bickford Avenue in Snohomish or online at Bickford.net. Back here is he walking off the field, 33, Evan Davis. He's had a heck of a night, called his number a few times. A senior, hope he's all right. Looks like he's walking pretty much on his own. He's got a little bit of help. Crowd over there, kind of the dark, far side. The Westland Lions showing up all the way from Oregon, driving up north, fighting through traffic out of the Rose City there. Yeah, up through I-5. Couldn't, couldn't have been pretty picture. What was that, like a four or five hour drive at least? Yeah. To here, yeah. At that time of day. Baird Gilroy, and he'll hand it off. Man, that kid is a bowling ball. And that's Cade Johnson, I believe. Yeah, he hits the hole hard, doesn't he? Boom. I mean, just. You got, you got purple jerseys just flying off of them. I'm thinking the Lions are going to run a lot of plays here and try to put some time off the clock. That would be the right thing to do, Coach Henthorne. Second and six. No matter what, both teams have to be gassed after this one. Well, they're not huddling, but they're not snapping the ball nearly as quickly as they were before. Yeah. Johnson gets it again, cuts back, now drives and pile drives to a Lions first down at the 30. He's been on the Tim Boyle hip sled <laughs> yes. right there all summer long. Look at that. Just, just, I don't know who else makes bowling balls. Like he can't call him the Brunswick. No. I don't know. I think he's else. a little faster than a bowling ball. You think so? Yeah, a little quicker. Yeah, yeah. He's got a little more, a little more scat to him. Yeah. Heck of a player. Yeah. It has been absolutely for us up here, everybody there in Oregon. What a pleasure to see the West Lynn Lions. John Eagle, Anthony Newman again. Kids Darren just... Griffin, wide receiver coach, also played in the NFL. I mean, just tremendous. And here's Johnson one more time. Right side, not much there. Just executing their offense, executing plays. Johnson gets the ball over there. There's really not much there. He's like, all right. Just lowers his shoulder and, and, and just goes forward. Mason Turner once again on the tackle there. Boy, he is racking him up. The senior. Missing big time Braden Slezak on the defensive side. Tom Try saying they're not there. They're doing fine for this area in the season, but they're not healthy. Yeah. He's just sitting second and seven. And now, they, as you said, they're taking some time before they snap it. Five minutes to go. Here's Danny Weidman. Great Good tackle. open field tackle there by Stephen Lee Jr. He's had a heck of a game. Fantastic tackle. That's about as tough as a tackle gets. Out in the open field like that, a real scat back type player that we've seen this guy run for a lot of yards tonight. And that's a great downhill tackle. 
So now sets up third and six. These Lions uh, go at Lake Oswego next week. They've got a tough Three Rivers League 6A conference to get through. But they, when you think about the, the, the future here, you got Gilroy, who's a junior. Weidman's a junior. Plenty of great seniors, but they have got unbelievable dudes. They do. That are juniors. Gilroy, oh, back baby. to pass. Open is Johnson, and he will get out of bounds around the 18, 17-yard line. That's going to move the chains, and it's a Lions first down. And this is a really nice play, running back just right out of the flat. The Lake Stevens brought pressure off that edge, and the, the, the pressure player is supposed to be covering the running back, and so now you got the back open in the flat, and the quarterback sees it, he reads it, and he makes the play, and they execute, and they get yards. Now the clock. A factor under 350 to go. Somebody's trying to get us to say go Oregon. Yeah. Not going to do that. Dilroy. They'll give it back to Johnson. Johnson slips through and crosses the 15. Yeah, they're just really running that clock and doing a really good job of getting yards and just keeping it moving. Well, after last year, again, the big win from Westland, 45-6. That game was over relatively early, but uh, this game has been punch, counterpunch, then just too many punches, too many turnovers and yeah. costly yeah. Areas of the field for the Vikings, but yeah. a non-conference. Both have a great shot here to continue on the road to the playoffs and another yep. shot at another state title. Yeah. Up the gut. Misses. Cuts down to the five. Inside is Kate Johnson finally taken down. Alliance on the doorstep once again. And, I, and I'm sure that Lake Stevens, it, it, it never feels good to, to lose a football game, and they'll have to lick their runes for a while. But I think in the end that they will find that this game gave them what they wanted from this non-league uh, schedule, uh, a real contest here to get them ready for, for the run in the playoffs that they're going to be in. Just keep in mind, this team, we mentioned this earlier, they have not lost a home regular season game here since 2014 i've forgotten that so this home crowd not used to seeing their vikings on the wrong side here of the scoreboard with two minutes left to go johnson can he get another one not quite yet god you just love to see those lake stevens football players not giving up a touchdown they're not going to do it they're going to execute they're going to play hard they're going to finish this football game and whether the game's out of reach for them or not they are still laying their bodies on the turf to stop them from scoring i love that love that about high school football that is it is great keegan howard there big number 80 in black with the tackle well Buck 28, Steve Hannon, we got to look and talk about our adrenaline fundraiser player of the game. I mean, I, I don't know how you don't give it to Aiden and White, but it's your call. He's got my vote. And now Vandenbrink gets the ball. Good and job. And spread wide. And the Great defense. Vikings come up big, and it'll set a third and goal. They may just let the clock run out, so give me your give me your calls, guys. So do you agree, Aiden? Yes. Gus, Donnerberg, 80 and White for the Lions, and then we need a Les Schwab lineman of the night. The entire, he just pointed on our monitor for those, the entire front offensive line for the, the Westland Lions. Yeah, take your pick. I mean, those guys have done the job. They have been tonight. tremendous. Well, we have to we have to pick somebody. As 22 seconds now, the clock is just bleeding, and see if there's a timeout. Was there was there was there any defensive lineman get sacks tonight? Yeah, I'm I'm looking here. Delay of game on the offense here is the they'll be pushed back here, third and goal. 
I, it, it is literally that that center has done a tremendous job for them. Obviously, the big kid. Who do you want for the lineman? I am going to say. 54 is the center, 66 yeah. is the left tackle. Let's get the center some love. What do you say? Let's get it. the center some love, I'm okay? 54 white, Ridge Hout. He's a senior, 6'2", 270. That's our Les Schwab lineman of the night, as you see. A snap here at 21 seconds. They'll just kneel down. That's classy here really by is. John Eagle and the staff. Huge respect for these two teams, Both these two programs. Tremendous respect. Both coaches couldn't talk enough about either side, the programs they've built. John Eagle, just in his second year, yeah. got a chance to go back-to-back -back and repeat as they shake hands. As the kids from Oregon, the 6A champions, will come victorious tonight. 49-30 is our final. Do not go away. Our adrenaline fundraiser, player of the game, Gus Donnerberg, number 80 in white. We'll have an interview with Ron the Wedge Henthorne. Also, our Les Schwab lineman of the night is number 54, Ridge Hout. We'll be back with that and more. You're watching Friday Night Football right here on STSPN. Do my best, sweetheart. <laughs> As you see, the teams coming together at the center. Again, a lot of fought hard. Scott Ox for Steve Hand around the Wedge Henthorne waiting to get an interview here with Ron. The Wedge Henthorne here, our adrenaline fundraiser player of the game. But, boy, hard fought. These are big, tough, strong athletes going head to head. Just fun to watch. Yeah. What a football game. High <laughs> level. Watch. Yeah, and you just, you just think there was – Two or three moments there where Lake Stevens really hurt themselves, and if they wouldn't have done just those that 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 pick right before the half, if that doesn't happen, I mean this game is coming down to the wire. The kickoff team, all those big returns from West Lynn, if you could just eliminate some of those yards, I think you 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 have a better chance. Obviously, I think that when they go back and look at this film, Lake Stevens. They're going to see a lot of good stuff that they did tonight, and they'll find where they made their mistakes that cost them the game, and they'll go to work on them. It was a big play <laughs> clash of the Titans, I'll tell you. One wow. to remember here. As you see Westland congregating, there's Ron right there trying to find yeah. 80. He's trying to wedge his way in there. He is, and nobody does it like the wedge, let me tell you. 54. Yeah. Ridge Howd. I love that first name, Ridge. Ridge. I love it. He should be on like Yellowstone. He should. Here we go. Let's go down to Ronnie with our player of the game and our lineman of the night. We'll see if we can get him turned around so our mic will work. There we go. All right. Ron Enthorn down here with a couple of really happy players from West Lynn down here. Uh, Gus, uh, you're our player of the game tonight. Tell me how you think this game went tonight. Um, uh, I'm really happy with how this game went. Um, obviously, it went in our favor. And uh, uh, I really want to thank all these Lake Stevens players for uh, keeping it cool and having a great 
uh, great sportsmanship throughout the whole game, and they brought us together for a little prayer here at the end, and I think that's awesome. Um, but uh, yeah, we we just we just need to come out here and do what we do, and um, and and I think I think we can I think we can take care of business in Oregon. I think both of these teams look like they were pretty even, although the score didn't indicate that. Uh, a few mistakes made a difference. Um, yeah, uh, at the at the end, uh, three or four plays is gonna is gonna change the outcome of it, of the game, and uh, and we were the team that had those three or four plays. Uh, but yeah, Lake Stevens is a great team, and I'm I'm really glad we got to come up here and experience what Washington football is really like. Thank you. Hang on a second there, uh, Ridge. Uh, tell me how it was down there in the trenches. Uh, it was a battle all game. I mean, those guys, we were going head to head all night, and it was it, we kept our cool, and everyone was chill. But it was a great ta great game, and I'm just glad to be here and everyone be healthy. You broke some uh, big holes open for your guys down there tonight. Yeah, we, we did what we could. We we tried to do what we can and just uh, keep on chugging and keep working on to the next week. All right, let me get these shirts out here for you. And we'll... This is always the fun part. Yeah, so number 80, Gus Donneberg, the, the part of the twin power packs there. He's our adrenaline fundraiser player of the game. He's getting the T-shirts. He's got a lot of. He's got a lot of uh, textiles to deal with, a lot of apparel to get going. And then Ridge Hout, our Les Schwab lineman of the night. As we Hold get that the up in front of you and face up that way to the camera there. In this there we go. Yeah, can you see him up there? In the there you go. Oh, the there he there. is. There they do. They know exactly what they're doing. Look at those two gentlemen. The wedge just stiff armed the center right there. Wouldn't you <laughs> let him be? And, and Gus, I got something for you here. This is this is what does it say on the front of that? Proud parent of a student athlete. There you go. The uh, proud uh, parent uh, T-shirt uh, goes. Who are you gonna give that to? Brother, gonna love that. Anybody you wanna say hi? To? Um, all my family, Grammy, Grampy, Aunt Two, oh, uh, Uncle Brent, Aunt Amanda, Grandma Joan, everybody down in Oregon. I wanna. Say oh, that's a big family, man. How about you? <laughs> I just want to say say hi to my mom, my dad, grandma, grandpa watching this from out of town. I just want to say I love all y'all and great, ready to have a great season. All right, thanks a lot, guys. Good trip back home tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, back to you, Scott. You heard fun stuff down from those guys. I want to see if I can get uh, John over here if you want me to. Sound like great. We'll try and get it. Great young men, very well spoken. Boy, they know the media. Their media training yeah. uh, hitting hard there. John Eagle's got him going. As Ronnie might try and get John Eagle. 49-30. The final here, check in again, STSPN. Check us out, our YouTube channel, of course, all the socials, STSPN. And we will be back next week with more Friday Night Football. Todd Elvig, our executive producer, five-tool player. Sarah Elvig on camera. As we wait to see, I don't know if we'll get an interview here or not with John Eagle as... The Lions getting some pics, and they're also talking. We have a great radio. Steve Willett's down there with KRKO, 1380 up here in Snohomish County. It's a big night up here. It's yeah. a big two two-time heavyweights it, here. It is, and, and, and it's fun to see the Oregon kids because we're we're we're, al we're already here, right? They took a big a big move up here. They did they stay overnight? Do we? Oh, I they... think so. I don't know. John Eagle said it's been a great trip so far. Yeah, so you know, this is a great experience for these kids, and this is the culminating event. Trying to find the wedge waiting there to get uh, a word in with John Eagle. He's got that's actual. Ooh, that's SB Live in. We got all kinds. That's Zach Harris. A lot of media yeah, here did. tonight, Steve Hannon. And the wedge is down there waiting to get his shot. Well, he's being polite. Usually he just breaks yeah, in. Yeah, oh, yeah. He's, he's, look, he's, he's starting to use his elbows. Yeah, nobody interrupts like the wedge, let yeah, me tell you. He'll wander right in there. And there's John Eagle. Really nice, nice for us to meet John Eagle, one of the oh, legends of Oregon coaching yeah. in high school. Also, he's Portland State, Oregon. It's not just high school. Right. He, he, he coached at Portland State there for a year. And, um, uh, you know, they have this opportunity to take take over one of these legendary programs in Oregon. And, boy, are they lucky to have him. Oh, I'll say. He is a great football coach, and he knows what it takes to build a football program. He's got the secret sauce, and he's proven it everywhere he's been. One way is to get, like, you know, 17 Hall of Fame, you know, football players, <laughs> former football players, your coaching staff. That can't hurt. Yeah, that really helps. You know? <laughs> they were tremendous. It's great down. Always Thanks to everybody here at Lake Stevens High School, the Lake Stevens School District. Jason, everybody, always so warm and welcoming to everybody, our crew, 
at STSPN as we're going to see if we can get a word of John Engel. Why don't you just turn on the mic? Maybe we can yeah, just, just get him talking. Yeah, just stick Just stick the mic in there while, while he's I got him talking. I'll, I'll jump in here with him. What do you? Zach Harris doesn't mind. Yeah, Jack. Okay, yeah. We're out with STSPN, too. I'm going to jump in here with you. So uh, tell me a little bit about how you feel this game was. Do you think it was a score was a difference, or do you think the way it just turned out? Well, I, I thought that you had two really good programs swinging at each other. And, you know, they land a punch, and we come back with a punch, and they, they come back with something new, and we come back with something new. And that's what you saw. You had like two great kickers. Yeah, uh, I, I think that as a team, we have to tackle better. Uh, I, 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 but I like the, the, our resiliency, the way we came back. And, uh, you know, the momentum swung big time. They scored two on us at the, be at the beginning of the third quarter. And then we responded, answered, and made some timely plays, timely passes. And I thought we ran the ball effectively when we needed to. We don't have a breakaway runner like they do, you know. But, but I, I was proud of the way we – and they were stacking the box, you know. So we were able to keep the ball on the ground, try to bleed that clock a little bit. So, But two great programs and uh, – Great well, high school football game. If it wasn't for the mistakes, it would have been maybe a different game, huh? Well, for who? <laughs> I mean, for either team, you would look mistakes both ways. No, I, I think that's part of football is you make a mistake, and, and, and now what do you, how do you respond? So, I mean, I, I, I thought we were going to win, and, and I, I, don't, I didn't have any doubt that, you know, the onside kick was, you know. <laughs> Surprised you, right? That's not, you know, that's not what we're about. We got to do better. But this, we got exposed – Usually you have to lose a game to get exposed. We say winning masks problems, losing exposes problems. Well, we won, We were fortunate to win, and now we know we have a lot to work on because I know that because the, I heard the kids saying it. And then when the kids are saying it, now we're on the we're on the right track. Well, good luck with the rest of your teams there, John, and uh, welcome. Uh, hope your trip back is nice and safe. You're going to take that long drive back tonight, right? Nice charter bus. I'll be sleeping the whole way. <laughs> All right. Good luck in your next game. All right, back to you, Scott. Thank you so much, John Eagle. The win there, 49 to 30. I want to thank again everybody, STSPN, all the guys in the crew for Todd Elvig, Sarah Elvig, Ron the Wedge, Hendorn, Steve, Coach Hannon, Hollywood Hannon, Scott Oshman saying so long. Thanks for watching. You're seeing STSPN Friday Night Football. So long, everybody. Good night.